so last session we had finally gotten out of the uh the long walk still in the darklands of course but the hundred something mile journey along the duragar highway culminated in a battle against a psychic priestess she was a priestess but a psychic kind of confusing and her entourage of guards and uh, a giant beetle the negotiations for finding her trox slaves uh broke down and battle ensued but you guys were able to put all of them down and make your way into the side tunnel uh, which led to the next 30 miles of very very treacherous splunking pretty much on your way to Krakadan. Somewhere along that journey some papers were burned which <laughs> later came to haunt the party. Well, And uh, you guys arrived at a room filled with white crystals that emitted a little bit of light that refracted off of everything, making the whole chamber rather uh, brightly lit, despite being underground with no established light sources. And that is where two sentient carnivorous crystal oozes attacked, and that combat ended up being rather dangerous. Uh, Gideon died, in fact. They were sentient? Though he's fine now. I say sentient just because they were moving. I guess it was oh, animate. Oh, oh okay. Sentient. I was like, they were sentient? <laughs> That's yeah, they, awful. I mean, they don't have... They could talk? <laughs> they were self-aware? <laughs> they have a charisma score, but they don't have an intelligence score. So I guess it depends oh. on what you think sentience is. Is it in- intelligence, wisdom, or charisma? But I would guess intelligence, personally. So the battle was rather difficult. They were hitting pretty, pretty hard. They had a high to hit and they crit on an 18 to 20 and uh, they had blind sight, which we found out halfway through. So that negated most of your magical defenses and everything went downhill until uh, Kieran started spamming out them a fourth level, I think fourth level, fifth level. That's fourth level. Yeah. High level line acid breath attacks just going through all of those. Uh, dealing I think 30 or so damage each until eventually both of the crystals did uh, dissolve leaving you to uh, continue northwards through a a long narrow tunnel Uh, and that's where the discussion and the discovery of the papers came out and then immediately after that you entered another chamber this one again lined with these white crystals that are emitting a a, a bright light and refracting off of everything in fact the entire ground of this chamber is like finely ground up crystals there's like a white sand of crystal covering this entire chamber the light is refracting off of everything to the point where any of you looking around like using your eyes to see rather than like blind sight or, or, or something else like echolocation sighted creatures uh, in the chamber take a pretty hefty penalty on ranged attack rolls and perception checks. It's a minus five uh, until they adjust to the brightness. But unfortunately, before any of you had time to adjust, you heard some voices coming out from some of these side alcoves, one of which was a feminine voice that, that said, Brother... I believe we have intruders. And then another one, a more masculine voice saying, Yes, sister. Karzur, if you would get rid of them. And those of you in front, pretty much just Gideon, Orin, and maybe Jessup can see two of the three creatures, would see a Trox standing in the middle of the room and then two creatures that look reminiscent of the Naga you fought before and as they came out you saw that the Trox was very much seemingly uh, going to comply with uh, the request of the one Naga and was about to charge its way towards you and with that we will jump into it directly with initiative I guess we have to roll again don't we I don't think we rolled before Oh, okay. Somebody deleted the archives. But I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah, I, don't I don't mind. I don't think we rolled before. I, I don't mind. 
Yeah, I guess guess we'll never know for sure now. We just I don't trust you. Well, sure though. I'm yeah. I'm happy with my role. I'm yeah, that's fine. It's, it's fine. I'm okay it's to fine. trust. It's it's fine. Yeah, no one's <laughs> upset about it. Wow, yeah. we flip flopped initiatives here. Yeah, we did. That's I rolled weird. a nineteen. <laughs> wow. Jessup is blinded by light. <laughs> was he in Vegas. Jessup, your initiative modifier is higher than two. Okay. Yay! I tied with someone. All right. At the top of the first round of initiative, this creature down here is going to move up to be just behind the Trox and then is going to cast a spell on the Trox. And in... Yeah, this would have to be in common because uh, the Trox doesn't speak the other language. The uh, This creature says... Here, Karazur, this should protect you. And cast a spell on the Trox. That'll be that creature's turn. Can we do a spellcraft? You may, if you would like. Ooh, I would do a spellcraft. I got a 23. Get out of here, Gideon, with that 9. <laughs> I got a 9. Jessup with a 24, Kieran 23, Orin 22, Gideon 9. Yeah. So, Kieran, you wouldn't actually be able to see. Oh, okay. Belay that. But the other two of you, so Gideon, you failed, so you don't you don't know anything. But uh, Jessup and Oren, you both identify it as the displacement spell. And of course, Gideon, as you would then see the effects of the displacement spell, it would probably be pretty clear. That'll bring us to Oren. I throw the ash of the burnt papers at them. You do get a penalty to range attacks, Jason said. <laughs> Orin's gonna cast a spell. He's gonna cast divine power, and then you said we do or don't know what the Trox speaks. Uh, you technically never succeeded on identification of the creature before, but we know the snake just talked to it in common. Oh, in common, that's true. I'm gonna cast the spell, so one could assume. Uh, Orin will shout out to the Trox. Uh, uh, we don't want any trouble. Uh, we were just passing through, trying to make our way to Krakenon. Uh We apologize. Uh, we actually uh, came across a group of slavers who had attacked some of your, your people there. Uh, and uh, we, we managed to defeat them. I don't know if that diffuses the situation at all. That'll be his turn, I guess. You want a diplomacy check? Yeah, that'd be nice. Ooh, I love it. Why am I even paying you roll 20? They actually go down a step. They're now <laughs> super <extra aggressive>. hostile. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's your turn. And I guess I'll five foot step. Like here. That's my turn. Next up, it is this creature over here. And you can see the Trox kind of tilt its head as you speak. Like it's taking in what you're saying. And then it is like it looks to this creature over here to the to the right. And... This creature looks back at it and, and sneers and says, Don't listen to them. They're clearly lying. They don't even have the papers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he planned that. Um, and then it will cast a spell on itself and also move a little bit back to be behind the Trox. That brings us to Kieran. Oh, right. Kieran probably doesn't really know what's going on from his positioning. So he'll just do a little bit of preparation and cast a mirror image on himself. So the number of images that I get is maximum of seven. So seven wow. images. Wow, nice. Yeah. nice, nice. And for now I will, I will ready a movement for when Gideon or Orin moves further in. All right. Uh, Gideon, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the divine weapon as a standard action. Then as a move action, I will do an invocation of destruction. Oh, we are rolling heavy. We're rolling heavy now, boys. He's prepping us. It's about to get weird. Okay, that's it. Uh, five foot step in, but yeah, that's it. Okay. How far do they have to move in to trigger Kieran? I guess that would be good enough. He'll move to be 
in Gideon's spot so that he can see better. Uh, so Kieran moves to be... I shouldn't actually move, right? Didn't I just go right before him? Yeah, I guess technically that's true. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us to Jessup. Jessup will, and common shout out to the Trox as well, and, uh, oh, my, uh, little friend here speaks the truth. We had met those slavers and dispatched them. I'm from up top, Nirmathas, where slavery is no good. And, uh, yeah, we burned the papers because we want no traces that you were ever owned. So you have free will down here to do as you choose. All right, roll a diplomacy. Maybe. Eh, 26. Oh, that's, that's not, not bad. Not great. Not great. You see that the Trox kind of, like, processes your words but it uh, it just kind of hunkers down and it doesn't look like it is getting out of a combative stance so do I need a sense motive for that to be able to notice or does that kind of come with the diplomacy no I'd say you can see it Jessup will shout to the group I think he's not backing down I would suggest if we can not kill him I would appreciate it now Oren did his diplomacy check but would, would that constitute as my standard then Usually, doing an action is a doing a skill is a standard action, but I could see it as a move. Like it, you're not doing like a a big skill check; you're just talking. So, hundred percent up could, to you. I because could, if I, I could downgrade it to a move. I, that's fine. If that's the case, then I won't start a performance, but I will cast haste. A totally arbitrary ruling, but one that I'm okay with. Well, it's just either do I start my inspire courage now or my haste. So haste is. Effectively better, but you're the boss. And then Jessup will tactfully say, well, I guess we're all good here. I'm going home. Five foot step back. That brings us to the Trox. Uh, the Trox will speak out and say, you will not hurt my family. As it moves up to here and is going to try to grapple Gideon. So this is against your CMD. That is a 33. Yep. Okay. You are grappled, which means you move to be adjacent to it. Top of round two, we have this creature over here. The first one, the feminine snake-like creature, who I think pretty much everybody is assuming to be a naga of some sort. It's going to move here, and it is going to cast a spell... Uh, actually, it's going to move here and cast the spell. And I want the point of origin to be the back wall here, I think. Nope. Actually, I can get it right here in this entrance. So a small bead of fire spreads out from the tip of the tail of this creature as it launches forward to the back behind you, Kieran, as it explodes into a fireball. And I need a reflex save from all four of you. Is it possible to make a reflex save while grappled? I, just take I a mean, you can make a reflex save while helpless, technically. Yes! Wow! Coming in I did pretty good. I got a 23. That's a natural 15. Well, everyone knows Orin's known for his reflexes. I mean... Well, you have a better reflex save than I do, so <laughs> in your full plate, funnily enough. <laughs> Kieran's ab, abs are holding back. He's got too much muscle. He's like those bodybuilders that like don't have good maneuverability. <laughs> they can't turn. <laughs> it's yeah, a, right. It's those he videos can't scratch his back. <laughs> when somebody puts a post-it between their shoulder blades and they can't yeah. grab it because yeah. <laughs> it's so beefcake. Turns out Kieran's had a post-it between his shoulders for this entire campaign. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> All right. So Orin with natural 20, that will pass. Kieran with a 23, that will pass. Gideon with a 13, it's not going to do it. And Jessup with a 32 will pass. So Jessup and Kieran will both take 15 points of damage because you both passed. Gideon, you will take 45. No, you will take 30 points of damage because you failed. Yep. Oren would take 15, but because of shield other, Oren will take eight. Gideon will take another seven. So that's how it goes. So 15, 15, uh, eight and then thirty-seven for K for Gideon. That brings us to Orin and Orin. Let me get the distance here. Yes. At the start of your turn, Orin, I would like you to please give me a will save. You got it. 
Oh my goodness oh, gracious. No. Uh, dude, that's not good. That's oh, just my. my style. Nat 20 followed by Nat 1. Let's go. That is kind of hilarious. Your Nat 1 still is 17, which is pretty stinking good. Technically, it's a 19, because I think this is going to be a spell or spell-like ability. I think that Nat 1 doesn't really care. Okay. That is correct. It does not. <laughs> all right. So, Oren, you are... You begin your turn, and you're seeing all these creatures in front of you. You see that the Trox has grappled Gideon. You see this one snake-like creature casts a fireball, and as soon as the flames evaporate, you're looking uh, to verify positions of everything, and you see this creature, and your eyes meet her eyes. And you are charmed. So it's as per charm person. So this makes a humanoid creature, which you are, regard you as its trusted friend and ally. If the creature is currently being threatened or attacked by you or your allies, it receives a plus five bonus on the save. You rolled a natural one, unfortunately, so doesn't really matter. The spell does not enable you to control the charmed person as if it were an automaton, but it perceives your words and actions in the most favorable way. Uh, you can try to give the subject orders, but you must win an opposed charisma check to convince it to do anything it wouldn't ordinarily do. Uh, an, inf an affected creature never uh, obeys suicidal or obviously harmful orders, but it might be convinced that something very dangerous is worth doing. Uh, any act by you or your apparent allies that threatens the charmed person breaks the spell. Unfortunately, all of the hostile actions that she took were prior to you being charmed. So basically, you are charmed from this creature's charming gaze uh, but it's not her turn to really give you any orders so you may continue as normal with the caveat that this particular creature here is a very close friend of yours right and if if i'm reading that right it says any act by you or your apparent allies that threatens the charm person breaks a spell so if one of them does something yeah so as soon as either of these do something yeah okay Orin's going to move up and attack the Trox. All right. Actually, we have haste, so how far can I go? I don't remember. So your movement feet. speed is 30? Or, well, it's the boots give you an enhancement, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so it's showing 40. So it wouldn't 40. stack. So, yeah, it would be 40. Okay, I can get to him. Okay. So I'm going to run to that one. Okay, doing that will provoke an attack of opportunity from the Trox. Yep, I'm aware. Can you make AOLs when you're grappling? Normally, no. But he has a bunch of arms. Trox have grabbing appendages, though. So. Oh, no! So, yes, with its grabbing appendages, so you know those tiny arms in the front of its torso? Those are grabbing onto Gideon, but its main big arms are technically free. That is the cool thing about Trox. So, yes, it will make one attack of opportunity with you against you. It hasn't done any of the abilities, so it's just its base bonus. 28? I'm pretty sure that's right on the money. That is right on the money. Sorry, it should actually be 27. Because <laughs> oh. this creature has not taken any damage yet, so the uh, the pre-included plus one isn't there technically yet. So it is actually only a 27. Oh, but it misses. All right. Now, question. Does that mean because it attacked me that I'm no longer charmed because it's allied with this one? Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, okay. but uh, you weren't charmed against the one you're adjacent to anyway, so... Correct. But yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not charmed anymore. That's the whole yep. reason I did that. Yep. <laughs> All right. And he's going to take an attack against the, the this guy. Okay. Oh, yeah! <laughs> My lord. Wow. <laughs> okay. So a natural 24 of 44. That will hit your target. The 27 will not confirm. Ah, nuts. Some high AC. 15 yeah, right. points Goodness. of damage, though. Not bad damage. And that'll be my turn. That'll bring us to that creature. That creature is going to step back and yell out, say, Karazor, what are you doing? Protect me. And it is then going to cast a spell. Uh, mirror images? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you see six of these creatures. Ah, would you look at that? <laughs> appear around it. Yes. <laughs> And that'll be its turn. That was a five foot step and a mirror image and a five foot slide. Yeah. That'll bring us to Kieran. All right. So is there, I don't know what is going on with this Trox, but is there like a knowledge arcana that I can roll to see if he's under the effects of a spell? 
so I know that dominate person gives you a DC to to notice. I don't know if charm person does, but technically you could roll a knowledge arcana to see a spell effect that is in place. And there's been enough interaction, I think, probably to justify that. So okay, you can so roll I'll, a knowledge arcana. I'll roll a knowledge arcana. Uh, 28. I say with a 28, you are able to identify with ease that these creatures are capable of charming because you saw you saw Orin give a kind of a weird sideways glance okay. to the one and then kind of shake his head when he was almost attacked. And then this creature, the Trox's reactions to some of these orders seem to be kind of suspicious as well. So you're probably confident that there is some sort of charm, possibly domination going on one or the other. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work, but I will try it anyway and see. I want to try to dispel whatever might be controlling him. I don't know if it is actually a spell, but I'm going to do it anyway. One thing about dispel magic is that it does say that it dispels spell like effects just as it does spells. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll it. I'll leave whatever up to you if it's a spell, whatever, but I will cast that. So that's going to be... Just and I'm not caster. going to bother with continuing with their uh, charming gaze because now that combat is in full and everybody has attacked everybody at this point, it's kind of not necessary. Okay. Oh my goodness. My caster level check was a natural three, so that's going to fail. Yes. Unfortunately, you cast it on the creature, but it does not seem to have any effect. You feel like uh, the potency of your magic was kind of lacking. Okay. Fair enough. Then I'm going to use my movement to get over here. Try to spread out a little bit. That's my turn. All right. That brings us to Gideon. Gideon, you are grappled. You can attempt to break free uh, as a standard action with a strength check or a CMB. Oh, not a strength check. A CMB check or an escape artist check. Or I think you can continue attacking with a one-handed weapon. Yep, which he does have. Um, I also just want to check something. So this was a, a domain ability that I gained, and I'm assuming it's like Orin's aura, which means it's a free action to turn on. You get a domain? Yeah. How did I not know that? As part of my exalted leveling up, I was able oh, to take... Oh, the exalted. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So you're asking what action type it is. Yeah, I'm assuming it's free, but I don't know that for sure. I wouldn't expect it to be free. I think normally, I think they default to be standard action. Okay. Swift action, do a divine touch. Heals me eight. And um, this is a bad situation. Uh, Jessup said not to attack them. Uh, I don't think anybody said not to attack them. I said don't kill them. He said don't kills them. Okay, so... And one other quick thing. Um, When you're grappled, are you still able to use both hands freely? I don't think so. Why? Because if you have a shield in one hand and a weapon in the other hand and you're only able to use one hand, then you wouldn't have a free hand to do divine touch. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, that's fine. How does he do it all the time anyway? Because I have the uh, shielded mage, which can use somatic components for spells with the shield. But since it's being held down right now, he can't. Gotcha. So we're just going to... We'll try to just break free then. Okay. That'll be a CMB check, I assume, because I doubt Gideon's yeah. <laughs> escape artist is great. 26. 26 is a pretty decent roll, yeah. uh, but unfortunately that will fail. Okay. And I think that's basically your turn. Yep, that's the whole whole shebang. That will then bring us instead to Jessup. Jessup. Jessup will cast a touch spell. Hold the charge. Jessup will run up to Gideon. Touch him. All right. Oh, you got to try harder like this. Freedom of movement. So I get an immediate check. So the way it sounds is that the moment this guy attempts to maintain the grapple, he will automatically fail is how it sounds like. Yes. I'm not immediately seeing that it breaks him free right away. No, reading through it, I don't believe that that's correct. I think that's how we played it 
maybe last time, but in hindsight looking at it, I believe you're right. That brings us to the Trox. So it would obviously attempt to maintain the grapple, but that will automatically fail. So the grapple is broken. Neither of you are grappled. So instead, the creature will uh, just do all of its attacks because it says it can maintain a grapple and still make attacks with its main arms. So it'll just make attacks with its main arms. Oh, I'm sorry, Gideon, I tried. So yeah, it will rage. It'll do reckless abandon. So I'm no longer grappled, though. If You're no longer say. grappled. You're right. Yeah. 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 No grapple. So yeah, it'll reckless abandon and it'll do all that stuff. And then it'll just do its uh, two attacks. Okay. So first attack against you, Gideon, is a natural two that's going to miss. Mm-hmm. The second attack. Oh, you're right. You're right, <laughs> Justin. Nope, nope, it's too late now. Too it late will, now. In the you middle committed. of that, five foot step. Oh, oh, what is this? Come off of it. Uh, I'm sitting yeah. here like, he completely forgot that Orn's threatening to the, the, the creature was ordered to do a thing. Oh, man. So the creature was was so surprised that you broke free that it just reflexively attacked you with its first attack, and then it'll five foot step and do, do the other oh, attack oh, against Orn. I didn't realize it was controlled. If it's controlled, then obviously. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, with its iterative attack, that is going to. Oh wait, no, that that hits right. Twenty-eight this time it's a twenty-eight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would the natural two have hit him? No, the natural two would not have hit him. Okay, so then we're good. Uh, so, <laughs> Orin, you will take ten points of damage, and I'll take ten points. So of you damage. both take five. <laughs> you <laughs> thought that it was 20 total, but no, <laughs> it was 10 all along. <laughs> I did think it was a bit more than So that is the Trunks' turn. It is now this little lady's turn. She hasn't been hit yet. She's going to step back and... Ooh. Yeah, that's the best play probably is she is going to cast another fireball back. So it'll be Kieran Jessup. Gideon will need to give a reflex save. Just with a 31, that will pass. Kieran with an 18. That will pass. Oh, nice. Oh, 15. Gideon with a 15. That's gonna fail. I have freedom of movement. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't do anything against fire. Uh, Gideon, you will take 23 points of damage. Uh, Jessup and Kieran, you will both take 11. That is her turn. Uh, which brings us to Orin. Orin, you are between two, well, technically all three of the creatures in a way. Five foot step. Okay. Uh, attacking this creature, where's the stat block I want to see? Okay, 31, 33, and 40 will all hit. So you will need to roll me. So in the chat, oh, roll yes. 1d7. A one will hit the creature. Anything else will be an image. Five. Okay, so that's one image gone. So I need you to then roll a 1d6 for the second attack. A one hits it. Five. Now I need a 1B5. Oh my five. gosh. Five, five, five. five. Very consistent of you. Well, I'd laugh if you rolled a five on a 1D4, dude. <laughs> so three images are gone, but the creature takes no damage. I'm cool with this. It's the creature's turn. It will step back and it will shout a little more aggressively Karazor! What the heck was that? <laughs> 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 and then on its turn, it's going to... Eh, it's probably the safest thing. It's going to magic missile you. Orin, you take seven points of damage. Gideon, you take seven points of damage. Actually, yes, because you're still within range. Yes. Uh, which brings us to Kirin. This creature is slowly getting pushed down the corridor. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's so many options. Kirin is going to cast... Actually, Kirin will just charge the one by Orin. Oh. Uh, straight down? Straight down. Nice. That will Whoa. provoke. Yeah, that's okay. Alright. If you say so. You have images, right? Those. That's what the green stuff is? Yeah, the green. Yeah, okay. so it would be a D8. I assume a 33 would hit. Yes. Uh, so a D8, you say. D8, five. There's an image gone. Okay, so. Battle of the images. Let it commence. Alright, so glaive attack will be a 26. That will miss okay. your target, but it is within 
five? That's the number? Within five? Yes, within five. Okay, so it does get rid of an image still. Okay. Yes. All right, that's my turn. All right, that brings us to Gideon. Gideon, you are not grappled. Yep. Imagine that. Um, and I'm going to take a risk here and assume he doesn't have combat reflexes. Oh, what a stupid thing to think. And he's going to cast Cure Critical Wounds. Okay. Creature does, in fact, have combat reflexes, which I didn't know until I looked. So it will take an attack of opportunity against you. Yep. So it's a 35. Wow, right on the money. Right on the money, I tell you. I honestly thought that would miss. Gideon cannot catch a break, and I don't have another instance of Breath of Life prepared. You take 12 points of damage. Okay. So all that really means is that you'll have to make a concentration check. Yep. And the DC for this concentration check, injured while casting, is 10, plus the damage dealt. So that makes it 22, plus the spell level. And you are casting... For critical, so 26. Okay, let me hit it. 33, you're fine. You take the damage, but you are able to hold on to the spell, and you do cast it on yourself, healing up for 38. So effectively, you healed for, like, 26. Then we'll swift action lay on hands, since now I can, or divine touch, as it were, for 10 this time instead. And we'll five foot step in. Okay. That brings us to Jessup. Jessup? Jessup? Inspire courage! Move action! And then, uh, sure. Inspire courage, what to do? Could cast heroism on the Trox. I could. Um, so move action, I will... Standard action, I'm going to try and to intimidate and demoralize the Trox. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't know, why not? All right, yeah, go for it. Yeah. You know it's bad when the DM laughs at you. I know. I feel kind of stupid <laughs> now after you laugh. No, it's fine. It's just it just seemed so comical to me. The situation, like this giant insectoid creature. It's thirty nine natural twenty. <laughs> so I would well, like it's... you to tell me what does Jessup say? <laughs> Jessup will look him in the eye and he's like, "Hey, you are being controlled right now, and I don't appreciate it." We saved you and your brethren, and now you guys are attacking us when they said that we were attacking you guys first. Knock it off. So he ends it with knock it off. <laughs> so the natural 20 on Intimidates, henceforth, mean that you go full Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to speak to your supervisor. Yeah, so because this creature has no wisdom, uh, the DC is... Uh, so it's another round for every five that you exceed it. So you meet it, that's one, so two, three, four. So four rounds. Total of four rounds. All right. So it is shaken for four rounds, and I don't believe that there is anything... It's not immune to mind affecting or anything, so yes. Shaken but not stirred. And then Jessup will five foot step. Move action, standard action, five foot step. It is the Trox's turn. It is going to this time actually do the command it was told to do before. (laughs) It's going to step up and it is going to grapple Orin. Now! So this is against your CMD, Orin. Does a... Okay, so Shaken, I believe, affects this, which will reduce it to a 34. Uh, Yeah. Okay. You are grappled, which means you become adjacent to the creature. And... The top of round four, we have this creature here who is going to snarl at you, Gideon, and say, leave her alone, and is going to cast a spell at you. So these are two ranged touch attacks. So that is a 24 and a natural 20. They're attacking Gideon? They're attacking his touch. This this particular one is attacking Gideon with a ranged touch spell, there's two attack rolls. One was a 24 touch, and the other yep. one was a natural 20. Uh-huh. Who, is, who is she yelling, leave her alone at? At Gideon. Oh, is the Trox female? It might it must be. be, you don't know. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I, I, I rolled a natural one to confirm the crit, and I was going to say, like, oh, the only dice roll that I could have failed, but technically a natural two also would have failed, so. Oh, okay. So, does not confirm. 
Does not confirm, but as two scorching rays come out at you, you will take a total of 30 points of damage between them, because I believe, let me just check, scorching rays 46 each. There's two rays, they both hit you, so yes. You take a total of 30 points of fire damage. Yep. And then the creature is going to five foot step here. Brings us to Orin. Orin, you are grappled. You can attempt to break free with an escape artist check or a combat maneuver bonus check. Or you could just, you know, attack it because you have a one-handed weapon. So. Yeah, well, it ain't going to be an escape artist check at a negative eight. I can promise you that. Uh, I said I could strength check. CMB. CMB, okay. Let my people go. <laughs> 21. A 21 will unfortunately not succeed against the Trox. Uh, you can't move or anything like that, so... So that's my turn. I think you're done. Brings us to this other snake-like creature, the other Naga, is now no longer rid of Aura and says, Yes, get rid of that one. And then this creature is going to... Can it do anything against Kieran? Probably, right? Surely it can. I don't think it can. There's nothing that it can do against me. Ooh, that's that's a thing it could try. Not Phantasmal Killer. But I don't want to roll for it, so it's just going to... Uh, it's going to provoke. It's going to move, which okay. will provoke from, from you. Okay. So you can make an attack of opportunity. Yeah, and I'll use my character trait, my tactician to get a bonus to my attack of opportunity since I always forget to use that. Attack of opportunity is a 35. That will hit. I'll need a d3 to see. Okay. If a 1. A 1. Okay. So roll damage. Okay. Damage on that is... Well, hold on. I'm not within 30 feet of Gideon. So just 12 minimum 12 damage. You have Inspire on, right? Yep, I've got my Inspire Courage on. 12 damage, and this is the one that was hit before, so all right. Uh, but it will complete its movement, and then it will cast a Lightning Bolt, because it doesn't know that you're pretty much immune to electricity. Uh, but it is going to try to Lightning Bolt you, Kieran. So could you give me a Reflex save? Sure thing. And I am not immune to Lightning Bolts by any measure. Uh, 24 Reflex 24 will succeed. I'm uh, rolling so you take on these reflex saves. 12 points of electricity damage. Okay, reduced by my natural resistance yeah. of 10, I take 2 damage. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was 20. Nope, not yet. Well, let me check on that, just to be sure. But I don't Regardless, think it is. Uh, that was underwhelming, and the creature will remember that. How does he know how much damage I took? <laughs> I can't. Right? I roll a bluff to make it seem like it was a lot of damage? He has a special ability called Detect Lightning Damage. I don't think that's the real thing. That's really specific. It's very specific. But (laughs) it's a character. (laughs) I don't think it is. Uh, Actually, no. Now that I think about it, I saw it marked red on one of the... uh, the ability guides they were saying like it never comes up but i guess when it does it's really helpful <laughs> but uh yeah so that does immediately bring us to kieran though i guess i will move to be up here that'll provoke yep that's okay from the trox a natural 19 it does not crit on a 19 so uh that will hit potentially but it's not anything okay Roll uh, so it'll be a 1d7 now. 1d7. 6. So that is another image. Okay, minus 1 image. And then I will... Oh, this is this is a tricky. So here's the thing. I am going to cast defensively. Because I don't know... He hasn't swung twice against me, so I don't technically know he's got combat reflexes. So I will roll a concentration. And I think I've got my... I do not have my combat casting in here, so this will be a plus four. 36. I think that'll get a lightning bolt off. So, reflex save, DC 17. All right. So it's going to hit all three of them. Yes. And it electrocutes Orin as well. So reflex <laughs> save. Okay, so they're almost the same. So we'll go Drox first. Uh, that is a 19, which will pass. 
The uh, female Naga, that is a 21, which will pass. And the male Naga is a natural one, which will fail. All right, so male Naga takes 48 electricity and the other two take 24 electricity. Holy crap. Oh, because of your stupid bloodline power. (laughs) I was going to say, why is my electricity so much lower? Because I get that added plus 10 for my my damage die. Yeah. All right, so again, the uh, the male takes 48 damage. Wow. Uh, And then the other two take 24. All right. So Kieran totally reminds me of a cool Zuko, and he basically just shot the same electric bolt back at them. Like Zuko Iroh showed him. Yeah, I did the redirect lightning. Yeah. And now that it's taken damage, you do see the Trox seems to like, like its whole body seems to shudder in a frenzied rage. But that comes up more on its turn. Uh, Is that the rest of your turn? Yep, my move in standard. I'm all set. That brings us to Gideon. Lightning bolts and fireballs galore, and Orin is grappled. What would you like to do? Not be in this situation. There is an exit to the north. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go ahead, cast Grace, move there, and attack. All right. 32. A 32 will hit your target. 18 points of damage. And she does not have mirror images, and she hasn't cast that on herself yet. So that will just go through. So 18 points of damage. All right. And that's your turn? Yep. Brings us to Jessup. Jessup will maintain performance. And why not? Jessup will cast a spell, Rope Finale. So I immediately end my performance at Shudderlinger, my Inspired Courage, and I will give Kieran an additional standard or move action. I would recommend standard, but his choice. (laughs) Uh, Well, if you insist. I mean, I can't have you pass up the line twice. (laughs) Pass up the line twice. Yeah, I guess I will do another lightning bolt, Jason. Lightning bolt. Another okay. reflex save. All right, the truck defensively gets. Oh yeah, that's right. Are you doing it defensively or? Oh yeah, probably. Probably should. So concentration plus four thirty six again. Okay. So the truck's got a ten, which will fail. The female naga got a twenty two, which will succeed, and the male naga got a twenty six, which will succeed. Okay, so this time what, half of thirty eight is what nineteen. Yeah. So the trox took the full thirty eight. And both of the others take 19, you say? Yeah, 19. Ooh, ooh, okay. A lot of ones in that. Rats. So I just did a standard action, and yeah, I guess he will move over Hyanda. And as he moves, is. Now, I know you said originally, Jason, we get a penalty to um, range attacks and stuff because of light. Have we had enough rounds where now that's kind of come back to us? It will take at least an hour. Oh, that much, huh? Yeah. Yeah. If only I had those magic missile wands. Yeah. Is that your turn? Yes. Okay, that brings us to the Trox. The Trox is going to, first off, roll to maintain the grapple. My golly, that's a 40, which I think will succeed. So. Probably. Orin, so it's not going to pin you, it's just going to deal damage with its uh, grapple. So you take. So that would be 10. So you take five points of damage. Gideon takes five points of damage as the Trox maintains its grapple. Okay. And then it is going to use its main arms to full attack you. So four attacks against Orin. First attack is a 32 to hit. Yeah. Second attack is a 28 exactly, and it is getting the plus one bonus. So yes, 28 exactly. Yes. Third to hit is a 36, which will hit. Yep. Fourth attack is a gonna miss with a 25. So it's it's bite as it goes to bite onto you with its massive mandibles. Those are unable to pierce through your armor, but all three of its strikes with its massive arms will hit you. So the first hit would be 12, so you take six, Gideon takes six. Second attack would be 13, so you take seven, Gideon takes six. And then the final attack would be 11, so you take six, Gideon takes five. It didn't feel great. Felt a heck of a lot better since I only took half, but it didn't feel yeah. great. And that is its full turn. 
bring us to the top of the round. The Naga over here is going to step back, hiss at Gideon once more, and cast a spell. She's going to do... Uh, can I split that up? No. I can split that one up. No. She's just going to magic missile. Uh, so this is going to be against Gideon. 12 points of damage to you, Gideon. Okay. And that is her turn. Orin, it is your turn. You are still grappled. This creature is slowly tearing you to pieces. You have no hope for survival. I'm going to hurt it. Okay. Or try to. So, since I'm grappled, do I still get all of my attack? Just, yeah. You get all your attacks. It's just your you have the grappled condition, so. And your weapon's only one-handed, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hacks, hacks. I'm All those system. will hit and confirm. Okay, so 59 plus 20, so that's 79 plus 16 would be 89. All right. A ton of damage. Uh, the Trox wobbles but stands. That is your turn. Brings us to this not, uh, this, uh, actually, I think it's a will save. All right. Uh, so this Naga over here shouts out a command and says, Karazur, there's one over here, this one, as he directs attention towards Gideon. And then he is going to, I mean, that it's such a laughably useless thing to do, but he's going to do it. He casts a spell. Well, actually, he's going to move back a little bit and then cast a spell. Okay. And uh, that is his turn. He just casts a spell? Yep. Which one? Roll spell correct. Uh, 24? Uh, Cure Light Wounds. That will then bring us to Kieran. Okay. I mean, he moved. They're still technically all in the line still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just the edges. Just the edges, but that's enough. I just saw Oren do a big hit on the Trox. Well, I guess I'll just <laughs> Lightning Bolt again. There's so many other things I'd like to do, but they just don't make as much sense as damage. So... Lightning bolt! Alright. Oh my goodness, that's some damage. Trox got a 20, which will pass. First Naga got a 21, which will pass. Male Naga gets a 16, which will fail. So, uh, the female takes 25 points of damage. Yeah, 25 on a, a pass, 51 on a fail. Okay, the Trox takes... Yeesh, that is that was close, and <laughs> die. Okay. So the male one who failed is at like negative forty, so he's dead <laughs> for sure. I love that Orin's like, we must free the Trox slaves. We cannot enslave the Trox. Well, and he, now he's like, die, I'm, Trox, okay. die. He's not gonna make him die. He's not gonna make him die. He doesn't want the Trox to die, but mm -hmm. he wants. He wants to be. Mm -hmm. He wants to be let go. You're the one hurling lightning bolts, killing yeah. people. This this man was pushed to the brink and it chose in a fight or flight chance. <laughs> okay. My chances of breaking free are almost none. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Maybe I can knock him out. <laughs> With that, uh, after oh, Kieran, do you want to move? Um. And you did cast that defensively, right? I mean, oh, you yes. almost can't fail. But let just me do fails. that again. Uh, 30 that time. Okay, so I think that's fine. Um, I will move to Just be... moving will provoke. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I'll move to be there. Uh, that is a 31 to hit. So yes. D6, 1, D6. 6, so another image goes away. Okay, and that's my turn. Gideon, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm gonna You're cast... you feeling fine. Nope. That's not exactly true. I'm going to cast uh, Second Wind since I do meet the first condition. <laughs> do you? Is yeah. is that number really one quarter of your total? I roll not so great. Yeah, that was a, that was a great roll. You live forever. Uh, and that is a swift action, so it does not provoke. Correct. So now the question is what kind of character is Gideon? I think he runs away. Do you think? Like runs, away, runs away and casts heal. Like a child. I think he's going to five foot step and full round attack. All right. Painful as it is. Okay. So the 24 and the 22 will unfortunately both miss. The 38 will hit, though. Dealing 18 points of damage. Right. Yeah. 
That's something. Yeah. Yeah. After that, it comes to Jessup. You see a lot of things happen that round. Oh, no. What's going on? And Smartcourt is uh, going to linger again for the second round here. And Jessup will move in. Is this uh, any difficult terrain? Is this just flavored racks? Uh, no, it's it's. there is no difficult terrain here. Okie dokie. I'm just going to look at a spell you real quick. Okay. Jessup will move in. He's got 40 foot movement. So he'll get he- here. And then cast a spell. So he's going to cast... Uh, I don't think I'm in range, but I'll cast defensively. Why not? He'll do a uh, ear-piercing scream All right. at the snake. Okay. Yeah, so I'll cast defensive concentration. I think you should auto-succeed uh, a level one. Oh, I just want to roll another nat 20. So there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it gets a fortitude save? Uh, really, really, yeah, it's going to pass. So, yeah, um, yeah it'll go ahead. pass. Uh, 23, yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing it for the free damage. Yeah, so it is half of 1d6 per two caster levels in your 12, so it's a seven points damage. All right. Not bad. Yeah, yell at him. Your turn. And then just opens his mouth, crinkles his nose, but no sound comes out. But it takes seven damage. All right. That brings us to the Trox, who is actually going to drop the grapple. Oh. And <laughs> is going to step here and oh yeah I forgot that it had displacement that whole time well whatever oh yeah mm. it is going to step here and is going to say stop don't hurt her and I mean it's going to full attack because it doesn't know <laughs> if you're going to stop yet it's not <laughs> stop don't hurt her but let me try and back your head in it is not intelligent, nor is it charismatic. It is going to make its demands known, but it is not. It's going to make its demands known, but it is also going to attack you. <laughs> yeah, just like my nine-year-old. So these are going to be against uh, Gideon. Uh, and yeah, it's going to do all four attacks. It's going to reckless abandon. It's going to power attack. It's going to do everything. Okay. So I think those two actually just cancel each other out. Yes. It increases the damage, but it cancels each other out, basically. So first attack, a natural one will miss. Sorry. Iterative, that might actually hit. With the, no, it won't. It's a natural 19, but the iterative is only at plus 12. So that's only a 31 on the iterative. Okay. Would have hit if it hadn't been an iterative. Uh, third attack is a is going to be a miss, and the bite is going to be a miss. Top of the round... That brings us to the the Naga creature, and the Naga is going to five foot step back and is going to speak out to all of you in common. It says, "Stop, stop! It was it was him." And she motions to the other Naga. She says, "My my wicked wicked brother. He he charmed us. He charmed us." And that is her turn. Can we get a free action sense motive on that bad boy, or do you have to wait for our turn? Uh, I'm gonna say wait for your turn. That brings us to Orin. So, Orin, the Trox has dropped its grapple against you and uh, begun attacking Gideon. The Naga then stepped back and is seemingly uh, supplicating, claiming that uh, the other Naga is the is the wicked, wicked brother that caused all of this. I say you should believe her, just lob her head off. <laughs> yeah, Orin's going to go down here. Okay, that will provoke. He doesn't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm going to talk. So then he gets up there and takes an attack. So Orin's not waiting to peacefully negotiate. <laughs> okay, a 31 will hit. Okay, 20 points damage. All right. As you do that, the Trox bellows out in extreme rage. Oh. Uh, and that's your turn? Yep. Okay, that'll bring us to Kieran. Oh, boy. So the... Trox is mad. Okay, let's do this. Let's move to be right here and let's do some magic missiles at the Naka, see if she's got shield up or something. So it would be 18 force damage unless she's shielded. Okay. Uh, yeah, so she goes down. Oh. Yeah. That sounds bad. Yeah. Why do you 
Why? Why? Why do? You, why are you sounding bad? Because they, they did you not? Did nobody hear that? They had made the claim that this one was dominating them. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, she said my wicked, wicked brother charmed us, and they both told you to stop. Yeah, I was like livid. Oh. And I was livid, yeah. and I didn't understand why everybody was doing that because I couldn't well. talk because it wasn't my turn yet. Too late now. <laughs> to, to be fair. <laughs> The girl Naga did try to charm Orin, so we don't know. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't roll my sense motive yet. To be, yeah. fair, to be fair, that is a gaze attack that I don't think can be turned yeah. off. <gasps> but do we? She, she can have her eyes closed. Jason? D- did, I rolled a natural 20 on my sense motive. Although you said that's like a standard action, right? Yeah, in this case, I would want an action for that. All right, well, I guess I, I won't take back what I did. I guess I misunderstood. Yeah, same. So, Wait, well, no, I'm, I'll stick with I'm it, confused, though. I'm confused, though. Did it. you not hear him? Or, like, what was the misunderstanding? Yeah, no, I just didn't hear that. Well, I heard it, but I, as a player, thought she was lying. So, I oh, okay, just okay. did the I thing, and now, apparently, that was not the right thing to do. But Karen did it, so she's dead. You don't know if she's dead. We also she's, don't. Well, we also don't know that she was telling the truth, so... You don't know if she was lying. You don't know if she was telling the truth. You don't know if she's dead. She, I mean, she's, she's definitely down. But you don't know if she's dead. But uh, you also know that the Trox is, like, really very angry. And I don't know which of you it should be more angry at. Uh, so I'm going to have to think about that when it gets to its turn. Uh, but Gideon, you are first. Uh, I don't even know. Um, yeah, so all you know is that the Trox said, stop, don't hurt her. Because he was going to wait and talk things out. Yeah. Oh, so the, the Trox, Trox sa- said that? Yeah. The Trox said, okay. The Trox said, stop, don't hurt her, then moved to attack Gideon because Gideon was attacking her. Then on her turn, she steps back, says, stop, my wicked, wicked brother charmed us. Then Orin runs up and attacks still, and then Kieran runs over and magic missiles, and then now it's Gideon's turn. Well, that all went sideways. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I had some yep. misunderstandings. Yeah, and so. I don't want to role play yep. the next oh, well. scene because Gideon's going to freak out. Like He's livid. Um, and I don't necessarily want to Maybe role play. That's fine. Because I, I don't want to role play a whole like fight if it's not what they thought that they would have done. You know what I mean? Well, you could justify it by saying that they, in the moment of combat, genuinely in character, just didn't hear it. Like it's a bit of a stretch because you hear everything technically, but that could be a justification. Well, apparently we don't because we misunderstand things all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, Gideon, I will allow you a perception check though. Yeah. Because this is, like, against his, like, moral Perception code, because he Whatever still serves Iomade to some degree. I mean, he's also making a lot of assumptions, but you're assuming that she was telling the truth. Right, but, I mean, he doesn't know that for sure. Yeah, yeah. everybody's assuming everything, so there's yeah. no, there's no, yeah, there's there's no, no knowledge. Right, there's right no now. knowledge yet. Right, yeah. right. Okay, also give me a heal check. Sure. <laughs> Eight. So, with a, 40, with a natural 20, 46 perception, you don't think she's dead. She's definitely down, bleeding out, and in very dire straits, but you do not believe she is dead. However, with your heal check, you have no idea how close to dead she is. Okay. That's all you know. Uh, he is going... You also know that the Trox is very Yeah. Angry. Stabilizer. Well, he's going to cast Grace, and he's going to shout uh, to his companions to, to stand down and let's talk this out. And he's going to move here... And as a show of good faith, he will cast... Bone Shaker! Cure, <laughs> bone Shaker! Cure, bone Shaker! Cure Light Wounds to Stabilizer. What kind of off-brand Paladin Cleric are you? You don't have Stabilize? No. You don't have Stabilize? No. Okay. Okay. In this instance, it is lucky that she did not get a chance to cast Displacement on herself. <laughs> yes. You cast that on her, she does not seem to make any conscious movement. Like, she's definitely still unconscious, but you obviously are led to believe that she is not bleeding out and actively dying. Stay your hand a moment, Oren. Let's hear them out first, please. Okay. That is Gideon's turn. That brings us to Jessup. Sense motive! Okay. Ugh, 24. Okay, with a 24, you get the sense that the Trox is genuinely concerned about this Naga in a way that you wouldn't think is charmed. You would also, like, as far as you're concerned, like, the Naga is telling the truth. Like, she seems genuine. Okay, so then, so that was a standard? Yeah. So then Jessup will kind of relay this. Yeah, hold the, uh, hold your horses here. I think, uh, 
We're onto something. No, no more fighting. No more fighting. Looks at the truck side eye. No more fighting. And then he'll kind of still. He'll move like hands up, very as passive as he can. I'm coming to help. Okay. So yeah, he'll just make it over here. I guess he wants to attack whatever, but he is trying to be as passive as possible. Uh, the Trox does not make an attack of opportunity. However, on its turn, yeah, Karen, you're the one who put her down. So it is going to just, in a in a total blind, frenzied rage, it is going to charge at Kieran. It's It seems as though everything you guys are saying is going, not even getting to it at this point. And it is going to, it can't full attack because it did have to move 10 feet, but it will take one attack against Kieran. Uh, that is a 34 to hit. Yes. So roll... 1d5, 3, so that's another image. Okay. And that will bring us to the top of round 7. She is stabilized. That brings us to Oren. All right, all right. Coup de gras. Coup de gras. <laughs> Smashes her head in. No. Been, that, um, that would be dramatic. <laughs> dramatic to say the least. Yeah, that would be... Yes, Oren will... He will channel. Okay. Yes, yes. And only exclude this Naga down here, I, I mean, guess. It's, that one's at negative 40. That one's Good. dead. That dead. one's you dead. Don't, you, just, you, can't, you can't worry about that one. That one, that one, no. There's there's no coming back for that one. Little did you know, Troxes are harmed by positive energy. Oh, no, he's undead. Ah, uh, no, just kidding. So you channel, so everybody gains 19 hit points. You do see the Naga's eyes flash open, and you're all instantly charmed. Yeah. Fair. 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 Yeah. I, I can only will say yep. real quick. Yep. 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 Gideon did this to us. Yep. Hope you're happy, Gideon. I pass. <laughs> After Oren. Well, you can move if you want, I guess. Oh, do I need a will save? Do I really need a will save? No, I'm joking. Oh, okay. He'll just look over at the trucks and be like, uh, sorry about that. Uh, misunderstanding. I, I, I've seen the error of my ways. Calm down. Calm down. You're, you're, Loved one's fine. See? Alive. Well. Awake. Well, maybe not well, but not dead. And that'll be his turn. <laughs> that brings us to Gideon. Oh, no. To Kieran. Sorry. Kieran will lightning bolt. Lightning bolt! <laughs> <laughs> oh, power word yeah. kill. Kieran is going to cast a spell defensively. <gasps> oh. Level two spell, so that's a thirty-three. Yes, and he's gonna go invisible. All right, and then he's going to try to move <laughs> over here. Okay, <laughs> that's yes. the the poor man's grace for you there, <laughs> because the it could still I still does provoke. not have any means of protecting you so it cannot make an attack opportunity. Okay. That's my turn. Okay. Now it is Gideon. He's going to delay. For all you guys know that Trox just smashed Kieran into another plane of existence. I mean, they heard you casting though. <laughs> it was the Trox. It was the Trox. Uh, so Jessup, uh, so Gideon, you are delaying Jessup. That uh, brings us to you. Jessup will Look down at the uh, Naga. To, oh, very sorry about that. Uh, do you mind calling off your friend over there? He is trying to wreck our face. All right. I guess diplomatize with her? Sure. You can roll diplomacy. Uh, Gideon will uh, act and roll to aid if that's possible. Okay. Say 34 to aid. She probably should have kept your roll there, buddy. So that brings the total to a 27. All right. My rolls are bad. After Jessup, it is Karazur's turn. Karzar's turn doesn't know where you went, but is in a blind frenzy raid, is going to full attack all the squares around it. I love it. Poor guy. All of the attacks miss because there's nothing around it to hit. Right, who has calm emotions? We need to get this barbarian to chill out. start moving down here. And then on the top of round eight, the uh, Naga will act and she'll say, Karzor, it's fine. It's fine. I'm here. Calm down. This is not a fight that we need to fight. And uh, with that, you see the Trox hearing this Naga's voice seems to come out of its stupor slightly. I think it went about as well as it could, given the situation. So the Trox seems to calm down and 
unless there are any other initiative order things you'd like to do, we will drop out of initiative. No. With that, the Trox rushes over to the Naga and kind of picks it up off of the ground and is holding it. And you can actually see now this particular situation actually kind of mimics the art a lot, fairly accurately. You can see the 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 Trox actually has the Naga in the art of the Trox around it. It's really creepy, though. The like expression on the Naga's face is really yeah. uncomfortable. I mean, Naga are creepy little creatures. Yeah, I don't like that. The Trox picks up the Naga and uh, is holding it there and is just kind of making this strange insectile like cooing noise, like a soothing kind of noise and uh, doesn't really make any any movements. But the, the Naga will will say, she'll say, we, we will stop fighting. We have no desire to fight you any longer. We simply want to go. Don't hurt, Karzar. She was only charm. Why did your brother charm you? <laughs> I mean, is it was was that really a brother? Yes, Sinva, my brother. We have been here for a long time. This has been our domain. We have bickered back and forth over who is the real ruler of our area. And when the Trox came through, we charmed them to use as manual labor, moving the crystals out of the way when we want to make a nice nest and whatnot. Um, but only one of them stayed, Karazar. The others resisted and fled further down the... <laughs> I'm sorry, there was a motorcycle. <laughs> it sounded like a flushing toilet. It sounded like a dragon. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, the others fled further into the tunnels, but Karazor, we managed to keep her here, and ever since I have grown fond of her, I figured uh, with Karazor around, if, if as long as we had the two of us together, didn't need my brother so much, but my brother thought otherwise. But then you showed up, and we put our differences aside momentarily. Jason, looking at that now, does is that the false serpent or no? No, no, these are two completely different Naga. You can okay. make a knowledge engineering check if you want to know anything about them. Uh, sure. I'm going to lure master that bad boy for uh, 30. Okay, so you identify these creatures and you get two pieces of information. So both of these creatures are known as spirit Naga. They are chaotic, evil, large aberrations. You know that spirit Naga are kind of like the witches of the Naga race. They're usually like hateful outcasts that are long shunned for their dark powers. They're usually, they tend to be like 14 feet long and they weigh less than 300 pounds. They're, they're very slender. You know that they have a, they're known for having tangled, greasy hair. They have very witch-like faces. And you get two, two pieces of information if, if you'd like. Uh, Can I ask a question real quick? Maybe. What exactly is a witch-like face? So like the very tangled, unkempt hair, the kind of the the weirdly shaped nose. That's that's a bit stereotypical. Sly grin. That's a bit offensive. I I aim to be yes. <laughs> if I have a moment where I am not offending someone, I just don't feel right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, a meeting about it maybe. <laughs> So yeah, two pieces of information if you'd like to know anything. I mean, we're not in combat right now, so I guess give me it's just some cool pieces of information, something neato. Oh uh, yeah, so you know it has a charming gaze, so any creature within 30 feet must make a will save or be charmed as per charm person. Um, uh, you know that it has uh, a wealth of spellic abilities. Um, it's, it's practically like a 7th level sorcerer, more or less. It Nothing ever happened with it, but like there was a poison attack. Whenever it uh, attacks with its um, bite, it does have a poison attack. I guess other than that, you know that they have an incredibly high perception, plus 22 perception. So they uh, they were not caught off guard by your approach by any means. Oh, well, uh, I guess we will go our separate ways unless my other three comrades have something they would like to chime in with. Junior shakes his head now. All right. Kieran also shakes his head no, but he's invisible, so no one can see him. 
<laughs> I hear it. <laughs> that is fine. That is fine. We will we will not hinder you. Okay, that, I guess that's about it. Is it is it our we, we cool over there? We all good? Honest mistake, you know, and all that. If I walk over there, are you going to try to hit me again? No. Hmm. I don't know if I believe you. Karzar looks in your direction of the voice, gives you a dirty look. Karen quickly scampers over here so he doesn't know where he's at. Do you know which way we need to go to get to Kragadan? I've never been to this Kragadan. Mm-hmm. I've spent my life in these tunnels in these dark lands. Well, that tunnel right ahead, where does that lead, do you know? Uh, that leads to the volcano. Oh, that sounds like a place we do not want to go. As my brother and I, we went there once and we saw that it wasn't it was a bit too hot for us, so we haven't gone down there in years. Hey, Orin, is there a volcano by Kragadan by any chance? Um, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> Orin consults his notes. Yes, Orin, Orin you would be aware that uh, Kragadan is built directly over a lake of lava, pretty much, and uh, it gets much of its power from the uh, steam and gas from oh. that lake. So, yeah. Oh, uh, well, actually, Kragadan uh, uh, is mostly fueled by uh, geothermal power. Uh, it's quite fascinating. It's actually built on a, a lake of lava, which you, you wouldn't think would be very smart, but, you know, because of the heat and the steam and whatnot, it, it actually gains uh, quite, quite a bit of, uh, of energy from that. Um, so, you know, the volcano very well might feed into that lake and put us underneath Kragadon. I'm a bit turned around in here, you know. So what I'm hearing you say is that we probably should head towards the volcano. Sounds lovely. Well, like I said, I mean, there's a lake of, of lava underneath Kragadon, so it seems to make sense that the volcano feeds that lake, so yes. Why is this just coming up now? I feel like this is an important detail. <laughs> well, these are secret dwarf secrets, you know? We can't give you the, the secrets to our geothermal power. Well, you know, that's one of those things that yeah, I could take back to my hometown and just be able to implement even though we're nowhere near any sort of volcanic activity but right that's that's not really you know something for a a small time cleric like myself to determine you know politics being what they are you know sharing technologies and whatnot usually that's treaties and such uh i I don't know anything about the engineering that goes behind the geothermal power i just know that it exists right well i assure you i have no interest in stealing your technology so I guess we'll just be on our way then, and... Hey, before you go, do you know of anything, any dangers down there that we should be aware of other than the volcano and the intense heat? I am afraid not. As I said, the last time my brother and I even bothered to go down that direction was years ago. There was nothing of interest at the time, but who knows? Anything could have happened in that period. The trucks ran in that direction, so maybe they'll be in that somewhere. Oh, there's more trucks. All right, interesting. Yes, there were, I think, four, maybe five of them that came by. Hey, is uh, there anything that maybe we could say to the trucks so they don't get all you know, mad at us and attack us too? Like a special code word or something that you guys use? Nothing? No? Okay. The Naga just kind of shakes her head. She doesn't know what, what's going on. Uh, the trucks would respond saying, They are simply scared. Please do not harm them. They are scared. Okay, so... Looks at you, just looks at you, guy, you three kind of finger guns, and all right, diplomacize. Do they, uh, do, do, do they speak common like you, or do they speak something else? No. Normally we do not speak common. I, I am the only one that we do. Normally we speak Terran, and she switches to Terran when she says that. Oh, okay. Oh, well, luckily I speak a bit of Terran, so this should be fine. Uh, I'm not the most diplomatic, though. <laughs> uh. I like to think that the default face for the Naga is that creepy smile so that she's just like staring at us with that like yeah. enormous. Yeah, she's she's looking at you with the most horrifying smile you've ever Menacing seen. Menacing smile. Kieran like shudders a little bit. All right, well, lovely meeting you. Safe travels on your journeys. Uh, guys, you think we should, you know, get out of this cavern and leave this creepy Naga? We can go. Sure. Remember, it can hear us. From a long ways away. 
Uh, we might want to rest a, a, a bit. Do you want to rest here with the Naga corpse over there in the corner? Not particularly, but I'm open to suggestions. Well, it seems like our options are rest in the area where those crystals came to life and tried to kill us, or we can rest in this cavern where there was a Naga that also tried to kill us. Doesn't matter to me. Seems that there's things that are trying to kill us everywhere we go, so we might just have to pick a spot and go to rest. We can go a little further in and potentially get killed by some lava monsters and or have a heat stroke. That sounds fun. Yeah, that sounds great. I don't do well with heat. It's already too hot down here. And you're telling me it's going to get hotter. Lovely. Well, you know what they say. It's getting hot in here, so uh, bring some cold spells. I, I have one cold spell. Well, if you guys want, I can put up a little tiny hut or something, maybe in a corner. We can double check to make sure these crystals aren't uh, alive. I got some spells. Um, luckily, now that I know the language, I can uh, cast uh, some spells so I can help speak Terran as well. That might help with uh, diplomatizing. You know. Oh, and I'll let you lead, of course, and then I could just chime in whenever. They're over here, Jason. The trucks and yeah, they went there. off to the northern edge of the chamber, and uh, it looks like there's a sort of a nest of crystals that they have gone to. They're still sticking very close to each other, and uh, you guys can make a perception check. Uh, they are speaking to each other, and they're not they're not like particularly hushed tone. So like, if it's in Terran, I'm not. I'm, I'm not casting spells yet, so I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they're not speaking in, in Terran. Oh, the mind. Naga can't speak Terran. They can't communicate through Terran. Gideon's slowly walking over uh, towards them also with his uh, morning star at his side, not wielding it. So you guys can hear them kind of speaking to one another, and you can hear the Naga saying, It's all right, Karazar. It's just the two of us now, but I'll protect you and you'll protect me. And um, you would see that the Naga is casting spells, a couple of spells, and they're all cure light wound spells that she's casting on the on the Trox until she's out of out of spells for the day of that level. Um, excuse me, I, I don't mean to interrupt. She smiles at you. He smiles back and he kind of looks behind him awkwardly. Um, I don't quite know what your relationship was with your brother, although it sounded strained. Is there anything you want done with the body in particular, or should we take to dealing with it? Not particularly, no. All right. We'll just get rid of it. We'll put it in one of the tunnels, and some creature or other will come by and make their, make their help themselves to it. All right. He nods. Before he goes, he will leave behind... Oh, no, just kidding. He won't. I thought I had a, a wand that only had a few charges on it, but I don't, so I'll just go. Okay. And uh, in that case, if they don't particularly care, he's just going to drag it out and throw it over there. Okay, and you can drag 300 pounds without much issue, right? Uh, He can lift it over his head without much issue. Okay. So you move it over here, you said? Yeah. Yep, so you drag the corpse out, and you can rejoin the others in the middle of the chamber yep. there. He will do so. Did you guys say you were... Did I just imagine Tiny They're going to do Tiny Hut over here. Yeah, they said they were going to after they scope it out and make sure it's okay. Yeah, you guys look through the chamber and, like I said, it takes an hour for you to finally adjust to the immense level of light on every surface of this cavern, pretty much. Uh, but you do eventually determine that there are no carnivorous crystals in here. There's no other threats in here. Uh, it seemed that the Nagas, like this particular chamber was the Nagas domain and they pretty much kept everything out of it. So it seems like it's it's quiet. We don't know what's down this way, right? Down the other corridor? Nope. But we know this is the volcano. Um, I guess hey, before we rest, guys, do maybe we want to see what's down uh, this other corridor just in case? Or do we want to rest and then head off to uh, sauna? If you want, I can try to go down and scout. A little bit. I can try. I can do go invisible, and if if things come to blows, I've got one more dimension door for the day. I could get out of there in a hurry. I'm good with that if you guys are, just to make sure that we're not going to have any other threats near us. So I'll cast Fly and Invisibility, and I'll do that, actually. I'll cast Fly when I get more to the mouth of this tunnel, and then I will try to soundlessly fly down through here. 
I don't know if it matters at all, Kieran. What are they, they're both minutes for level, right? They are. So just be ten minutes. I don't think we've used any of the charges from the extend rod. If you wanted to use that on both, just so you have it for longer, I don't expect we're going to use it tonight or today. I don't think we had it all, so might as well. Okay, all right, twenty minutes. So you make your way back down and then into the uh, the other tunnel that kind of slopes downwards slightly, and you can see as you progress further in, dozens of tiny cracks mar the otherwise glassy smooth walls of this small alcove. Uh, There's obviously the passage that you just came from uh, to the north, and there are dozens of boulders, stone boulders, that bar passage to the east of this chamber. You kind of look around. You don't see any creatures moving around. You don't see any threats or anything. There aren't any crystals in this particular area. But like I said, the walls are incredibly smooth. They're natural stone, but they're incredibly smooth. And um, as you're looking around... Like maybe you look at some of the boulders and, and and check them out. You think that it, like you could, you could probably move these boulders. You're you're probably strong enough to, uh, but it would take you a lot of time and a lot of effort. Do you have knowledge engineering or survival? I have no knowledge engineering, and survival is a zero. Ah, uh, okay. I so. roll a. If you get a natural twenty, you might learn anything. But natural ten. Do I learn half of a thing? No. Okay. You don't. But yeah, so you're in this chamber, and uh, like I said, you could probably move the boulders, but it would take a long time, but you don't see anything else of interest here. Okay, can I, and I understand that this is going to make noise, but can I cast Detect Magic in here just to do a, a sweep with the womp, 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 womp? Sure. You cast Detect Magic. Uh, you do not detect anything magical in any direction okay. uh, at all. Okay. All right, then I will fly back to be with the others in this open cave. And I'll report and say, well, it looks like it it slopes downward a bit. It's a bit strange. The walls are very smooth, almost like glass, but there's tiny little cracks all over in it. And there's, it looks like a, a tunnel that continues onward, but it's full of collapsed rubble and boulders. Uh, we probably could move them to get through, but it might take some time, even with all four of us working at it. And it would probably make a lot of noise if there's something on the other side. It probably would hear us coming, but I didn't notice anything in there when I checked it out. I'm not sure if that's a way that we should pursue. If we've got a, a road ahead of us here, perhaps they'll meet at some point. Or, you know, the fact that it's collapsed makes me think that it's probably not anything really worth exploring further yeah a little bit of me wants to uh be uh wants to see what's behind there but at the same time a lot of me wants just to not take any unnecessary risks if we don't need to i agree i agree yep well i i suppose though if we have the tiny hut that should be all right i'll be glad to get somewhere where there's a bit of climate control because i am very very hot yeah sure no problem so jessica i don't know over i guess far away from them i guess we could do it over in here so you go to the opposite side of the area. You cast Tiny Hut, and you all get inside and uh, are relieved of the heat of the surrounding tunnels. Even though it's, I think it mentioned something about being like 72 degrees or something. I'm sure it almost feels like walking into an air-conditioned room in the summer. Yeah, it's like walking out of a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> just just, just sitting there with paper fans just blowing at you guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 and uh, so you guys are going to rest for the day? Uh, if we can, I don't think there's any other spells that I want and or need to cast. I don't really have any utility spells, really. So I think I'm good to go just to rest. And obviously we'll have watches throughout the night so we can ensure that we don't get sneak attacked in the middle of the night. Yeah, because you guys can see out of the tiny hut, but people can't see inside of it. That's correct. That works? Correct. I think so, yeah. But if something, you know, if this is the home of some creature that shows up in the middle of the night, I want to make sure that we are prepared for that. Yeah, but at least it's like bright light in here and stuff, you know? Yeah. Be like, sorry, this is our capsule. We rent it out for the night. Find another one. So, yes, you guys go through your, you determine what order everybody will be on watch. And uh, you find some nice places to sleep amidst the jagged crystals 
and crystal sand and you rest for the I guess night again who knows what time of day it is anymore but you do rest and uh, some hours go by and you don't really see anything of concern you see that the uh, Naga and Trox kind of come out after uh, a couple hours and are looking around they kind of check over here they see that you dragged the body over there and then they come back and uh, go back up to the the nest to rest for some themselves because they they were pretty beat up there but other than that nothing seems to happen in this chamber and the the next day comes you all wake up you restore your spells and and all of that stuff and you you get some hit points back and all that and you can continue adventuring forth yeah, I guess the biggest thing that Jessup will do is as soon as we go to depart and leave into the next area, um, he would cast Tongues Extended with Terran. It's the primary focus. Do you have to choose the language? Um, I think you can probably do one at a time, so that's what I'm just default saying. I, I mean, I'm going to keep it on in case I hear anything. You know, we got to roll perception checks or whatever for anything, so I'm just going to tently listen to that nonstop. I mean, I know quite a few other ones, so. Okay. I've cast my normal fastidiousness and a dark vision communal for Gideon and Jessup. And with that, uh, what would you guys like to do? To the volcano! To the volcano. To the volcano! One does not simply walk the crag again, guys. Oh, wait, hold on, wait for me! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll there, or Orin! Oh. oh my goodness gracious! What's? <laughs> I'm kidding. There's like eight traps over there. <laughs> yeah. Just them all off. yeah, right. <laughs> I guess Kieran should be percepting as we move forward. We never do that. <laughs> I mean, Gideon probably should. Orn will not be percepting as we move forward. 23. You, uh, you don't hear anything. Nice. All right. Can we ever just have a, a tunnel that goes directly where we need to without branching off? It would be nice. <laughs> That's like some architecture I know of, of different castles and dungeons that just have doors that lead to other doors. So silly. Well, should we head down or forward and around? I don't know why am I why I'm in front. I'm very easy to hit. Um, I don't know what direction feels hotter. Kieran will put his hands on the walls and see he'll he'll stand like right here and put a hand over here and a hand over here. Which one feels hotter? Uh so with your perception check, you can tell that this direction going straight ahead, mm-hmm. uh, you feel that it is much, much hotter than this direction going down i think going forward is our best bet to get to the volcano but my curiosity has peaked and i kind of want to see what's down here if you don't mind um no not at all oh sure as long as none of us get killed go ahead sure let's go well i can't guarantee that but we can do our best 17 more naga (laughs) so you make your way forward into this uh other chamber and, and uh this chamber so again, Kieran, you are probably immensely uncomfortable because, as I said, straight ahead was hotter than this particular area. However, this chamber is still swelteringly hot. So you could, from where you were before the in the little fork of the tunnel there, you could see an orange light shining from around the corner going straight ahead. Again, mimicking the, the increase of heat over there. Uh, it very much indicates where the uh, the lava the lava pool might be. But in this particular chamber, on the distant wall, distant wall, this back wall, you can see crude paintings of a three-eyed circle with bat wings lining the wall, and you can see rubble at the uh, the southwestern uh, part of the passage, which you presume to be the other side of the collapse that connects back to where you were before. Uh, but yeah, you see like crude paintings on the wall over here, but you don't see any creatures. You don't see any movement in here there's nothing like that interesting well it seems like it's all right in here i kind of want to check it out there's some paintings on the wall i don't know if it'll pique your interest Orin. like finger paintings i'm not sure i can't tell if they're dwarven or something else take a look when jess appears about paintings and stuff he will cast investigative mind on himself and then meet the rest of the group okay so among your party who has knowledge engineering or craft stonemasonry Yes. I used to be a stonemason. Orin, you are a dwarf, so you can make this check. Oh, 
Do I? Because I'm wearing a belt of dwarves. <laughs> I actually, my belt is just the little dwarves. <laughs> Technically, yes, because that would give you stone yeah. cunning. Yeah, I have stone cunning. Oh, yes, you do have stone cunning. And actually, the, so this this check, I, I, I apologize. This check would only be for if somebody asked for it, unless they're a dwarf who gets it for free. I get it for free because I'm basically a dwarf now. So yeah, both of you can roll a uh, knowledge to engineering or a stone masonry, craft stone masonry. I don't have either of those, so I will just look at them. I'll allow you both to roll it still. The DC is higher than 10, but because you're... Oh, so it's basically just an intelligence check for me then. Essentially, yes. 19. Wow. That's pretty good. That's a plus zero. Jessup will roll engineering and use one of his investigative mind charges for advantage. That is not, it's not that great. 22. Yes. So as you guys are making your way towards those uh, crude paintings back there, I will need anybody who is interested to make a knowledge religion check. Uh, once you get to that wall to identify what all these symbols are and and all that stuff. <laughs> wow. wow. Oren, you have no idea what these symbols are supposed to represent. I don't I don't even think this is religious. Uh, Joseph is consistent with uh, 22 again. <laughs> with another 22. <laughs> Kieran is just like, I agree, Oren. I don't think there's anything religious about these. <laughs> no religious significance. 32 Clearly. on my religion. Jessup, you are not you're not sure um, what is uh, going on with these either. I'm not sure what's going on with these either. They're clearly not religious. However, Gideon, you do identify these symbols. These symbols of circles with bat, ring, bat wings and whatnot, as I said, they are incredibly crude. They're not very detailed. But you think that these symbols represent Yarlathotep, who is... Nyarlathotep is one of the outer gods of the Dark Tapestry, who takes on thousands of forms, each having its own cult, unholy symbol, and favored weapon. Uh, you recognize this as one of the many, many, many aspects of Nyarlathotep. And in alphabetical order, which one of you comes second? Okay. Or no, no, actually, everybody roll initiative. Oh boy. We'll do it this way. We'll do initiative. So we want to roll low. <laughs> no, probably the opposite. Oh, oh no, crap. I'm second in initiative. I don't like okay. that. Oh, man. So you guys are all standing here inspecting this wall, trying to figure it out. And Gideon, you probably mentioned like, oh, this is Nyarlathotep. But as soon as you like mention what it is, Karen, you feel something strange at your feet. He's going to like jump back and look down at his boots. As you are standing there, you feel the stone beneath you collapse. And in doing so, you can see and feel this thin surface of stone of the floor breaks underneath your feet, partially submerging you in the lava below. But you do get a reflex save. 21 reflex. Kieran, um, you, you try to step back, but you stumble as you do. And uh, a... a pretty substantial portion of one of your legs is submerged in this lava and you take oh dear this is gonna be a lot 35 points of fire damage ow and he doesn't have ow. a leg anymore is my leg just eaten off by lava no do I have any actions to do anything so at this moment we are going to go in initiative order okay so top of initiative round Jessup so, Jessup, you just felt the stone to the side of you collapse and Kieran fell into a little bit of molten lava. He was able to jump back enough that he wasn't like, he didn't sink all the way into the lava to instantaneously die a horrible death. Uh, but you do see that his leg was in the lava for uh, probably a, a solid second before he was able to pull it out. And you can see that uh, he took quite a bit of damage. You can see in the very brief moment that you have, uh, the lava here is cooler than normal lava. Like what you're standing on now, you realize at this moment is like the hardened surface of molten lava and you've just broken through the top of it. It had cooled enough that the top had been solid and you had just broken through to the bit be beneath that had not been solid. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like, it's like black, but you can see the like orange yeah. gooby. It's it, not like stepping into an active volcano lava. It's right. 
But it's it's like that slow moving lava that when they yes. play with it, it kind of looks like really cool. Like you want to touch it, but also it's not good to touch. But it's still very dangerous, obviously. Obviously, Kieran is actively being burned alive. Yeah, so Jessup, what would you like to do? Ah, cooking Kieran! Jessup jumps back. If he can, I don't know. Like, <laughs> can he move? Yeah, you can move. Yeah. Do, I mean, I guess with a quick perception check, can I look around? Like, is this all looks to be cooled lava? It seems like this entire chamber, now that you're looking at it and you know what's going on, it seems this entire chamber is cooled lava. Yeah. But only that one square seems to have collapsed. Jessup tries to hastily move back, I guess. Okay. Should I do some weight distribution? Do I have to roll anything or? Just move wherever you'd like to go. Okay. Well, I would like to move to where I'm not going to break through and burn myself. Basically past these steps here that you okay. see going up. So Jessup will move. Um, he'll try to, I guess he'll double move to try to get like far back to give them some space. Okay. So he'll kind of move to the entrance and uh, guys come back up here. Next up, uh, Kieran, you're at the initiative count 21. You have uh, your turn. I'm going to say for the reflex save, you jumped back here. Okay, so I'm. am I still in the lava? No, your reflex save, you did fail the reflex save, but you're able to get out of it enough that you're not like, you're not sinking into the lava. It's just that your foot was partially submerged for long enough that you took an immense amount of damage uh, before you were able to break out of it. Okay, Kieran is going to cast fly, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, he'll cast fly. Okay. And then he will fly to be back here. And as he flies back over here, he he flies and sits on the ground. As I'm sure that there's still residual lava like on his leg. That I know it's not doing like persistent burn damage or anything. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. There are some droplets of molten lava that uh, as soon as your leg came out, they cooled down quite quickly. To where they're like blackened and charred, but they're still very hot. Yeah. Did, did his did his pants burn off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. quite Burned a bit. It. Yeah, man. Fortunately, Gideon has mending, doesn't he? Yeah. I don't have even. Mending. I do. Ah, oh, too bad you couldn't make hold those pants. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, with that, don't you, don't you need to shut have up, the Jason? Just let mending work. Holy jokes cow. on you guys! Just has craft quilting. Just let mending yeah. work. <laughs> Oh, yeah, with craft quilting, you could do it. I yeah. could do it! <laughs> Jokes yeah. on you guys! That's a hyper-specific craft, but yeah, that'll work. I totally did it. So, Karen, Karen uh, you're you're flying back out? Yeah, I, I could only go that far with a move action, so that's my turn. On initiative count 20, I would like the two of you remaining in the chamber to roll me a d100. Each of us separately? Yep, uh, both Kier, uh, Gideon and Oren, just each of you. Okay. So the, the floor does not drop out from beneath you, and it brings us to um, whoever was next. Uh, Oren, you're next in initiative. I'm getting out of here! <laughs> and actually, I should say, uh, on that initiative count 20 as well, you can feel the entire chamber beginning to rumble. Did anyone take a picture? That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, the entire chamber begins to rumble, and the walls start collapsing around you. You manage to, like, the... The tiles beneath your feet don't collapse, but the walls and everything, this entire chamber is beginning to give way now that that little tiny cornerstone, basically, of, of cooled lava has broken free. So, Oren, you move out of the chamber. Okay. Yes. Gideon, it is your turn. So, I pull out my light detector, uh, an alchemical item I had <laughs> the whole time. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, uh -huh. that will burn the image uh, of the wall to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll, I'll use some move action to get out of there because I, I had that uh, from like in my hand from the beginning. Uh -huh. yeah, I, it's it's kind of like those yep. smoke goggles with the bastards. part of spelunking. It's part of spelunking, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. you can check my character sheet. It's there. Okay. It's not. Yeah. When was your character sheet last edited? So we're gonna double move out. <laughs> On the next round of initiative, technically we would have. Jessup and Kieran, but on the initiative count 20, the entire chamber collapses and is buried in molten debris. And you can tell that if any of you had still been in the chamber when that occurred, chances are you'd probably not make it out. Yeah. Good grief. Like you, you might have found a way, but looking at it, I don't know if you'd have made I don't it out. think so. You're falling into lava. You deserve to die. Well, because... 
I'll just I'll be a little out of meta game because it's already happened and you're outside of it. But characters remaining in the chamber at the end of the following round take eight d six points of damage, or half that with a successful reflex save. They are subsequently buried by molten debris that deals an additional two d six points of fire damage each round. A character remains buried. Characters who aren't buried can dig out trapped creatures, but take two d six points of fire damage for each round they do so. Digging out trapped creatures is very difficult. You can move a five foot by five foot area with one minute of work. So whoever was stuck in there would be taking a lot of persistent fire damage. So that's why I say I, I don't know if you'd have made it out, honestly. Well, if, if I had Dimension Door, I could have, right? But you'd be buried, I imagine. I mean, you'd have a, there'd have to be a concentration. You'd basically be pinned in molten debris, right? Yeah, could you even use somatic components? Well, well, it's a verbal. It's a verbal. It's more just the concentration piece of it. Yeah, you can get yourself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's all that matters. That's all I care about. But yeah, like <laughs> you had, you had plenty of time to get out of of that area because as soon as you, as soon as the it rumbles, you all had plenty of movement to just move out of the area. No other squares collapsed. Um, a moment later, you do hear a huge explosion deeper in the the tunnel there. You're not sure what that's about, but you all seem to be somewhat safe-ish in this tunnel now. I guess we didn't die, but curiosity can kill. Can we still see the images from where we are? No. The entire chamber is collapsed. It's it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone for good. For good. But you did identify the 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 drawings. And that's it. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll craft painting. As much as he can remember onto a little okay. thing. It's a very crude image, so it, it's really not hard to yeah. recreate so He'll just it. recreate a sketch, and just in case he comes across more of them on their adventuring day. Yep. While Gideon is worried about recreating the paintings, Kieran is frantically pulling a potion out of his haversack. Or, I, ass- yeah, I assumed we took and care of all of that first. He is... Drinking a potion of cure serious wounds. Just because pouring his, it directly on his leg. <laughs> his skin is like blistering. Yeah. I don't even know. Cure serious is 3d8 plus 5? 16. So I think that'll take the edge off at least. His skin was blistering. And I think that, you know, it doesn't heal him back up because he took probably twice that. But it's better than it was at least. Yeah, you quickly brush off any of the remaining debris that's on your now exposed leg as your clothing has uh, burned a- away uh, a decent amount up that leg, probably up to almost your knee. But after brushing all that off and drinking the potion, potion, you can see that the wounds begin to scab over. They're not fully healed yet, but they're almost gone. Wait, you okay over there, Kieran? I thought, uh, I thought you were done for. Yeah, right. That wasn't fun. That hurt a lot. We are just talking about how hot it is down here. Well, that's that's heat that I, I can't handle that heat. I really can't handle that heat. And if we're going into a volcano, this is... Oh, boy. All right. Well, at least I can walk on it now. And I'm starting a new fashion trend here with one pant leg and the other gone. Did you have a boot? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, the boot's gone. Are you, are you gone. just barefoot? Well, this is fun. I bet the ground is hot. How am I even going to walk? Carefully. The ground is rather hot, yeah. <laughs> The ground is rather hot. <laughs> One thing that I realized is that the outfit I still have in my character sheet is a cold weather outfit, which is <laughs> not appropriate for this. So <laughs> I think I have probably taken as many layers of this cold weather outfit off as I can. You don't have any other outfits? You don't have a hot weather outfit? No, I didn't know we were going into hot weather. You don't have slavers outfit? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I do have that actually. Yeah, I have that. Well, what what shoe size are you? I don't know what size <laughs> shoes men wear. <laughs> um, a ten? Is that How a? Karen? That's not right. Kieran is five eleven, five ten. Yeah, say so he could be in size nine for sure. I'm not sure that Galarian puts shoe sizes on quite like this. Anyhow, I have three pairs of boots. So if you want one, gosh. <laughs> Just a why? boot store? He just pulls out a pair of boots from his back pocket. <laughs> Gideon, do, why do you have so many boots? Well, they, I mean, they come in handy, but I'm just... 
it's Jeez. only a technicality. I have two soldiers uniforms and a cold weather outfit. And then I was just curious that I did check a soldier's uniform does include a sturdy pair of boots. So that means that technically all of my outfits include a pair of boots, including my artisan's outfit and my explorer's gear. So I actually have one, two, three, four, five sets of boots. <laughs> well, the artisan's outfit probably wouldn't be boots. Yeah. It'd probably be like standard shoes. Yeah. Explorer's outfit would definitely be right. Boots. So I have three pairs of boots, and then whatever the cold weather outfit includes. <laughs> That's probably snowshoes. Oh, one thing though, Jason, is I have sleeves of many garments. So it says I when I slip these sleeves on, I can choose to transform the appearance of my current garments into any other non-magical set of clothing. So could I just use those to like make my pants appear? Yeah. Where the heck did you buy those? Yeah, I bought those in Long Shadow. Yeah, it's an illusion, so it doesn't actually help. Right, anything, but it's going to make me look not better. look like a dweeb. Right. Uh, like, I'll look like I have pants on. Yeah, you look like a proper slaver now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lord. Okay, this okay. is not okay. what I I'm meant. sorry, I'm sorry. Servants, oh, what do you man. call that? Yeah. <laughs> here, we don't do that here. Uh, yeah, so. Um, but yeah, you can you can make it at least look like you're good. And then with the one boot from Gideon, <laughs> you're spared the, the agony of standing on this yeah. stone. And I mean... As long as I've got this illusion to make it look like I'm wearing pants, he's just going to, like, cut off the other pant, and he's just going to wear shorts. <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing shorts and boots. Wait, this is the best fashion It <laughs> looks like I he's know. wearing pants. <laughs> this is amazing. It's really hot, so that'll just help keep the airflow going, you know? Oh, I want this magic <laughs> item just so that in the hottest of summer, I can look fully decked out in winter gear, but I'm actually yeah. wearing shorts. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm good to go. I feel better. Thank you, Gideon. I'll try to not burn these boots up, but I can't guarantee that. I'll I'll make it up to you when we get to Kragadan. That's all right. And uh, we press forward. Okay. You guys make your way forward. You guys can put yourselves all there at the the opening of this chamber, and I'll I'll read you. I'll read you what the description of the chamber is here. So, uh, you look into this this chamber, and it's a, a fairly circular uh, chamber that is like rough hewn stone it's all the walls are very rough and it ex extends outwards you can see just barely off the, your peripheral vision gideon it sends another tunnel even going even further eastward you can see the floor consists of broken bits of rock nothing big enough to be difficult terrain but there's something that i think probably for gideon especially you pale at seeing one well, two things but the first thing probably more than the other. You see insectile body parts litter the area. Smaller nooks around this chamber, eight to 10 feet deep, are dug into the wall, reaching almost to the ceiling. And you can see some chitinous body parts that are lodged into a lot of these areas. Uh, and then you also see uh, a creature hovering in the middle of this chamber, almost motionless. Oh. So let me... Is that a beholder? There's no beholders no. in Pathfinder, but it looks like a beholder. You see four tentacles stick out of this churning nucleus of multicolored fluid hovering in the air. Oh. You see plates of rock and metal orbit this floating mass. Each of these tentacles is holding on to one of these bits of metal. And it's just hovering there, motionless, until you enter this chamber, of course. In which case, you can see its entire mass slightly rotate, almost as if it's facing you, but there's no face. It's just this amorphous thing with tentacles. And I'll, I'll blow it up so you can see it a little bit more there. Like that. Oh my. It's like a it's called brain. brain? It does look like a brain. Yeah. It does kind of look like a brain with tentacles that is flying in the air. That's yes. horrifying. The description of just like floating liquid is really gross. And as soon as you get to where you are, Gideon, we will have everybody roll initiative. Uh, turn around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you don't want to be here. Gideon gets a 12. Jessup gets a 24. Oren gets a 24, but I think his modifier is lower, so he'll... He should get it because he rolled an at 20. Oh, come on. Just because he pays for it. Yeah, that's not fair. Pay to win. So... This creature, again, like I said, its four tentacles latch on to four of these different floating 
uh, bits of metal around it. And you can see that as it grabs these pieces of metal, they begin to glow a faint color. Um, uh, so like one of them glows faintly green, one of them glows faintly red, one of them's kind of like a, a pearly white, and then another one is uh, like a like a, sort of like a rose type color, like a like a deeper, I guess rose isn't really a deeper red. It's like a pinkish. Crimson? Rose is really like a pinkish. So it, you see those four colors appear and the creature is going to make two attacks against you, Gideon. Against my flat-footed AC. Against your flat-footed touch AC. Oh, yeah. shoot. That's not good. Yeah, so it's, uh, let me just make sure I'm reading this correctly. It is a ray of acid and fire is going to come out at you. Okay. It is a ranged touch attack. You're definitely within range. Okay. I don't think it can miss. That was a bad roll. But 27 against touch. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, 28. Uh, and then, gosh, bad roll. 31 against touch. That'll hit. So you take 22 points of fire damage. Oh, no. And 23 points of acid damage. Holy uh, shoot. I have acid resistance 10, though. Was that two separate rays? So I actually... So the first one was all fire. The second one was all acid. So if you have 10 against acid, then the second attack only deals 13. And it will just kind of hover there. Okay. That'll bring us to Jessup. You see, you don't quite see the creature, but you do see two... uh, two bolts of energy smash right into. Yeah, I wasn't going to do anything if it didn't attack, because I can't see anything in the room. But Gideon's getting attacked. I, I don't know. Does haste work? I mean, it's a yeah. burst, but I'm within all of our... Yeah. Uh, I mean, no two of which can be more than 30 feet apart. Right, I just didn't know because of line of sight, but if I center it on myself, both Gideon and yeah, you're Aaron good. are within 30 feet of each other. So, um, Jessup will quickly look back at the other two and... Uh, here you go, guys. Here's some haste, inspire, courage. Giddy's getting shot by some elemental beams of sorts. We're fighting again. Already. <laughs> Already. <laughs> okay, so standard action haste. Kieran almost just melted his body. Let's get in combat, guys. <laughs> but I look good now. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, can Jessup roll to dispel the illusion of Giddy, or, uh, Kieran's pants? Do you have dispel magic? I will disbelieve it. No. <laughs> disbelieve no. the illusion. Would you like to move? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I would not. Okay. That brings us to Orin. You also see the rays, but not the creature. Move up here. All right. Moving all the way up. Okay. And because you're hasted. Some 40. Yeah, so you can do that in a single move action because you're hasted. Correct. And he'll try smacking it. All right. Make an attack. A 34 will hit your target. 13 points of damage. All right. And that's your turn? Yep. All right. Brings us to Kieran. All right. Kieran will cast Spear Image and prepare to engage. This time, middle of the road images with five. All right. And he will move up to be next to Gideon to see what's going on up there. Okay. Yeah, you can see this uh, floaty creature there. Oh, he makes that noise. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his turn. That brings us to the bottom of the round. Gideon. I'm going to cast Shared Wrath against that creature. So y'all benefit from Wrath, which is plus three morale to attack and so do. so. So the, the saving throw on that, is that the creature gets the saving throw? No, there's no saving throw. Who gets the it's, why is there a saving Because uh, it's a mind-affecting ability on them, technically. So it's harmless. But they, they could save against it if they wanted to. If you don't want to have... Okay, because Wrath is a personal spell, so shared Wrath. That's why it's different. Correct. Because it's an emotion mind-affecting. So I guess it's just... If they didn't want it, I guess... Yeah, interesting. <laughs> All right. I don't know why they wouldn't, but... Um, anyhow, then I will do invocation of resistance, gaining six points of acid resistance. Okay. And five for step there. That brings us to the top of the round. 
to the creature. The creature flies upwards five feet, so it's like a five-foot step straight upwards. That's pretty much as high up as it can go. This chamber's ceiling is only about ten feet in most places, so it's still within reach, but it's just above you. And you can see that it appears to be healing some of its wounds. And it's going to make two ray attacks, this time against Orin. So that is a... rolling really bad, but 28 against touch, and another 28 against touch. Yeah, those, those both hit. Ooh, I forgot the other ability. That I'll remember that from now on. So yes, yeah, so Orin. This is going to be halved because Gideon will be taking half of this. So Orin, you will take 11 points of fire damage. Gideon, you'll take 10 points of damage. Orin, you will take 11 points of acid damage. Gideon, you will take 10 points of damage. And yeah, your acid resistance doesn't do anything about that because you're not taking the acid damage. No, but it does for him. Oh yeah, for the invocation, yes. That'll bring us to Jessup. Jessup! Jessup! What is going on here? Jessup will move up to here. All right. Give me a monster law. Dungeoneering. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a dungeoneering, yes. Uh, I'm going to use uh, another one of my um, uh, knowledge to do the mine mine churches. All right. And that gets you, what was it again, 30? No, that's lower. I'm just rolling with advantage. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. So I'm just regular rolling here. Ugh. 20. Okay. You have no idea what this creature is. You haven't the faintest idea what this creature is. Just looks up, stares at it intently, looks back at the group. I don't know. It's a floating brain thing. It shoots beams. That's about it. I love it. I, I, I don't know. Just kill it. It's, yeah. So, uh, just for maintain performance. Let me check that off. So I did move. And what should I do now? Joseph would have pulled his bow out when he was running. If I uh, and then why not? We'll, we'll give it give a good old ear piercing scream. It's gonna take half damage. Okay, so that is a fortitude. Yeah. yeah. So a twenty will pass. Consistent seven. Seven points of damage. All I right. Scream. Wait, can it hear? I don't know. Does it have ears? Huh. I, I, I maybe. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say anything about it not having ears. Or not being able to hear, at least. I mean, it, it honestly, it probably can't, but uh, I don't think Yeah, it's just complete matters. sonic damage, unless it's immune to sonic damage. Yeah, it's not immune to any sort of sonic and It doesn't damage. have anything else there, so. All right. That's your turn? Yes. That brings us back to Orin. <sighs> it's still within reach, right? Yeah, it's still within reach. It's just above you by a couple feet. Smack it. A 37 will hit, a 24 will miss. And he's attacked. 28 will miss. Ah, nuts. Okay, so one of those do hit, though. Extra six from Jessup. Yes. I yell at it more. Okay. That uh, will bring us to Kieran. Kieran's going to become a dragon. All right. So I will expend my daily use of form of the dragon and become a, a blue dragon. So you see, you all see a, a blue dragon surrounded by Kieran's. Yes. Yes. Because he's using the vestments. It's a dragon with pants. Yeah. The dragon's <laughs> wearing really nicely tailored pants. No shirt, though, because right. Karen never wears a shirt. And does a standard action do that? Yes. I imagine so. It's, yeah, I would imagine so. So he's going to fly in to here. I don't know if it has reach. I don't know if it can provoke, but he'll fly to be. I don't know if he can flank, but that's where he'll be. Given the height of the chamber, no. Because you can't get an angle. Because it's above Orin, you'd have to be above it to be on diametrically opposed sides. Okay, all right. Well, I'll still be there. That's my turn. And that brings us to Gideon. Who will go ahead and do another swift action heal the Ove? All right. Then he will cast protection from energy fire. All right. The creature is going to make a spellcraft on that. <laughs> and he's going to move there. The creature's plus 27 recognized what that spell was. Good for, good yeah. for it. Okay, and then you move up. Yep. All right. That is uh, brings us to the top of the next round at the creature's turn. As a swift action, it is going to change out its gems. Oh, beautiful. So you see that its red gem turns into a... What color is this? A blue gem. And the green gem turns into a... Actually, no, it's not going to change the green gem. But uh, the red one turns into blue. 
Uh, and then uh, it will take two ray attacks against... Um, I guess I'll roll for it. I don't have a preference. Three valid targets. Okay, so Gideon, you will be taking the uh, ray attacks. Okay. Uh, that is a 30-something touch, and then a higher-than-that touch. So you will take... 17 points of cold damage. Okay. Followed by 24 points of acid damage reduced by your invocation. Nope. Invocations don't affect me. Oh, that's right. So you take the full. Reduced yep. by my ring. Uh, yes. So 17 and 14. Yep. And it will heal up a little bit. That'll bring us to Jessup. Gideon, I still don't know what it is, but watch out. I think it can change its elemental attacks. Yes, I, I figure that part out. Jessup will maintain. All right. And then Jessup will. We're just gonna we're gonna swift action arcane strike. We're gonna take some shots. Okay. Uh, I would say you'd have to five foot step to be able to get a clear line of sight on it, and but you will be fighting into into melee. Yeah. So I should be within point blank range. Arcane strike. Fire into melee is checked. I moved with my mind, and then uh, take three shots at it. All right. A thirty-eight. With a nat 20, crit confirmation 24, so it will not confirm. 28 will miss. I think the 31 hits. So the 38 is the only attack that potentially hits. Roll me a d100. <gasps> Wait, what? It's the thing I forgot to do the first round. Uh, so all of your attacks will miss. Oh, sorry, Jessup. Oh, no! I'll s- stick to cast it. 31 misses. That's not great. Not- yeah, but like, what sort of protection does it have that a 54 on a D100 misses? A 50% miss chance would do it. For displacement. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's displaced. Yeah, but isn't it like, a Z- isn't it 1 to 50 is the miss? No, 1 to 50 is the hit. Oh, it- no. Um, no, it's miss chance. Oh, no, yeah, you're so right. So like 1 to 20 is miss chance. Yeah, you're right. You're She's right. right. So yeah, the, the, the first effect would hit. It would not confirm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I always get it backwards, so I had to ask. You have a very hard time visually pinning down this creature. I Like, you all have dark vision to see in the dark, yes? Yes. Okay, so uh, even with your dark vision, you're having a very hard time pinning down this creature's exact position, but you do hit. That brings us to Orin. You gotta roll pretty high to hit. If a mm, that is a pretty high to hit. Oh, you got, guys, you got Says buffs, the though. guys with 35 AC. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty high to hit. The 31 will miss, the 26 will miss, the 32 will miss. Oh, no. <laughs> Amazing. Hey. Amazing. Good to know. Would you like to five foot step? Nope. Okay. That brings us to Kieran. All right. Kieran's going to full attack. All right. Uh, so a bite, a hasted bite, two claws and two wings. First dragon bite is a natural one. That will miss. We're off to a good start. Hasted dragon bite is a 33. That will miss. Claws is another natural one. <laughs> miss. This is going well. It's Second going swimmingly. claw is a 24. 24 will First miss. First wing attack is a 25. That's a natural four. Second wing attack. Why is the second, wait, wait, why is the second claw five lower? Oh, I was doing my iterative. These are all primary. So still attacks. would miss, I mean, but that's 29. They all still miss, but I just want to make sure that And then the wing the- was a 29. Oh, yeah, that'll miss. I'm so good at Pathfinder, you guys. The wing might be a secondary <laughs> attack. You you need to check to make sure which ones are and aren't I don't primary. know, but they all miss, so it doesn't matter. That, that's my full round attack. That brings us to Gideon. You see that your allies are having a hard time reaching this thing. Yeah, the uh, the impossible to hit is seeing pretty crazy. So we're going to go ahead and Divine Might. All right. Action. And... Uh, try to hit this thing ourselves we didn't have destruction on did we no uh jason give could you give it three hp back excellent i had that checked <gasps> okay hacks sorry my ac should be higher than what it's saying but i'll worry about that later let me make sure that it's doing this if it's because you're carrying like four pairs of boots dude yeah should it be though yeah Divine Might adds a deflection to AC against that tree. Do you have a ring of protection? Ah, uh, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, so he will go ahead and roll three attacks. The natural one will miss, the 19 will miss. <laughs> 41? The 41 will hit. Dealing that much damage. 
Well, did she have to roll too? Oh yeah, you do need a. I do need a. I do need a d hundred. Okay. Phew. Okay, hits. Yeah. Phew. Okay. Four more. It's, it's right. about dead. Okay. That brings us to the top of the next round. The creature will heal up a little bit, and it is going to do some ray attacks. What's it got right now? It's got cold and and acid. Yeah, acid. it's going to stick with those. It's a little, uh, let's stick with those. It's going to do two ray attacks. We'll do another roll for it. It's going to go after Kieran this time. What did I do? It's just going after you guys. I just missed twice, like, hilariously with two natural ones. You're a dragon. You're scary. I'm a medium dragon. I'm basically like a dog, a big dog. So let's say 34 touch and a 32 touch. So you take... No, I don't. Roll your images. I've got images. These rays hit you. Interesting. Unerringly. It's got freaking true saying. Why do I even bother with buffs? You see these images cycling around and the rays go to the exact image that they need to. So you take 20 points of cold damage and 22 points of acid damage, but the invocation will reduce the acid damage by, what was it, six you said? Six. So, okay. yep. 17? No, 22 minus 16. six is 16. Uh, and that'll be its turn. It's actually gonna, it's gonna five foot fly over here. And that brings us to Jessup. Jessup. Sure. Shared Wrath gives a plus three morale to attack and damage. So Good Hope will not do anything. I mean, you guys are about as buffed as I can get you. Yeah, so Shared Wrath and Wrath will not stack with heroism. No, and then Good Hope is just a AoE hero. So um, Inspire Courage is really the only thing I could do for buffs. So I'll maintain at least. And let's see... What spells do I got? Yep, guess Jessup will... You'll just kind of move and then over yonder and take a shot, I guess. Okay. Get on the other side. So still firing into melee, but swift action. Still the arcane strike and all that nonsense. All right. 34. A 34 will hit your targets. Uh, I need a D100. 52. And that is with the minus four programmed in already. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. That was a pretty good roll. So damage... So 14, and uh, my Discord of voice, another four. All right, next up is Oren. I'm going to keep trying because I believe in my 20s. All right. Nut. Well, you got some 20s, but all those 20s will miss. Wow, low 27, roll. 24, 26, all of those will miss. A five, a seven, and a four. Didn't even break double digits. Next up is Kieran. All right, Kieran's going to cast a spell on himself. <gasps> Okay. He is going to cast a bull's strength. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. That is a forty-one spellcraft to identify that. Yep. So that's my turn. Okay. Gideon. A swift action, heal up a bit. Divine touch for ten, and we'll move on in there and full attack. He can still reach it. Yeah, it's 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 up, like it's ten feet off the ground, but it's like within range. You just can't really flank it. Thirty-five or thirty-five. Both of those will hit. A 30. 30 will miss. So two D hundreds. Yes. One hit. So the first attack will miss. The second one will hit. 22. All right. Sorry, how many attacks was that? One hit. Three. 25. Okay. That brings us to the top of the round. The creature's turn. It's going to focus all of its attacks on Gideon. Gideon seems to be the only one that's hitting it. So first ray, uh, that is a... Oh, I forgot I had point blank shot. Okay. Listen. That is, it hits. That is a 39 yep. touch. A natural 19, which is a critical threat for this creature, but it's a 43 touch. Yep. To confirm, a 27 touch. So, you take 25 points of cold damage, followed by 43 points of acid damage. Or third. Uh, 33 points of damage, uh, acid damage, because you have a ring. Okay. So you take a total of 58. I will cast Second Wind as an immediate action. Yep, and you go below zero as an immediate action. Yep, so okay. So there's that. And then uh, Martyr's Last Blessing will proc. So everyone heals 13. So you heal 21 points of damage, and everyone around you heals 13 points of damage. Is that how that works? And then on my next turn, Enduring Bloom will start at the top of the round. 
but as we've established before, because you did in fact go down, you are prone. Yeah, uh, we have established that, though I was curious about that. That's something I might bring up again later, but not this combat. Okay. Yeah, we can we can talk about it if you have a, an argument for that. Dude, in every anime, you go unconscious standing up. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every anime. That brings us to Jessup. Uh, Jessup, you noticed that uh, Gideon went down. Uh, it looks like he's alive because his spells all kicked off, but uh, it looks like he's getting a, a bit of a beating and uh, having a hard time hitting this thing. I mean, I mean, you're actually hitting it more frequently than I thought you guys would be, but uh, yeah, it's a tough one, it looks like. Oh yeah, that's right, it heals a little bit. Jessup's going to cast a touch spell. I don't know why I have an accent today, but I do. And then Jessup's going to run over to Gideon and touch him with my okay. cure serious wounds. 27 minus 3 in that Gideon. So it'll be, uh, is that 24? I think it goes up to what? 15, I believe, is max? Yes. So right, I heal so 24? Correct. Yeah, because Inspire Courage is built into that. So 24 points of hitting. And then free action maintain. I didn't say, but. All right. That'll bring us to Orin. <sighs> this has not gone well. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. A 34 will hit, a 25 will miss, and a 31 will miss. I finally hit it! Yep, I will need a uh, 100. The 100. No, no, I forgot about that. Oh, boy. Ah, so that will miss, in fact. <laughs> Nuts! No five foot step there. Okay, that'll bring us to Kieran. Come on. The bull strength dragon. The bull dragon. All right, <laughs> let's try this again. Let's see how, how it goes. All right, I did read that wings are secondary, so I'll roll those right this time. Um, dragon bite one is a 40. 40 will hit. I have blind fight, so I get to roll this twice. So yes. that would miss with a 40 on the D100 and a 98. So that will hit. Okay. So the first attack does 22 damage. Plus four. Okay. Plus four. It's 26. So. Okay. Okay. Second bite is a 32, which I think no, misses. Miss. Just first miss. claw is a 37. That will hit. Okay. Roll a d100 twice. So first one is a 25, which misses. Second one is a 63, nice which hits. Line fight is kind of like the best it's feat. It's pretty, pretty good idea to have. That claw is a 17 damage okay. with Jessup's six. And then my second claw... I get it the full BAB because it's still primary, right? Yeah, all of the primary attacks are primary. 36 to hit? It'll hit. Okay. D100. D100. I'm just going to roll, roll two. 96 yeah. and a six. Yep. So uh, damage on that is 17 damage and then two from Jessup. And then okay. wing attacks. Uh, first one is a 33. That'll miss. And the second one is a 30. So those both miss. miss. Close, though. Man, dude, Dang how do you... Rolls. You went really the opposite direction with rolling this time. <laughs> yeah. Like, my highest roll on that was... So the 40 was a natural 17, and then a 9, and then a 14, and then a 13, and then 15, and 12. So yeah. not too bad. Um, I will stay where I'm at right now. That's my turn. Didn't you have to five foot step up there anyways? Or did you not? I don't know. No, I was okay. just right there. That'll bring us to Gideon, who is uh, conscious. Yep. He will have his Enduring Bloom go off, which will basically cast the Cure Light Wounds. He's going to cast... Oh, no, we've talked about this. Movement does not prefer a text for opportunity, but standing up still would. No, standing up would not, I don't think, but picking up your weapon would. So I think... I think Grace would allow you to stand up from prone without provoking, yeah. But you wouldn't be able to pick up your weapon without provoking, I think, is my understanding. Okay. Is that not how we ruled it before? Yeah, which is the same thing he might do again, is just grab the other thing. What do you like to do? He'll, uh, he'll cast Grace, stand up, and uh, pull out the large and archaic obsidian knife and broadsword. Okay. That's everything because that's a swift two moves. All right. That'll bring us to the top of the next round. The creature is going to go. Uh, as a swift action, the creature is going to swap out the uh, the rose one. No, the, the pearly white one. 
for uh, the red one. And it's going to make three ray attacks at Kieran. Oh dear. They're all going to so, hit, by the way. Natural 20, yeah, that's going to hit. Oh dear. To confirm... Okay, maybe not natural one will actually miss um, the, conf- the confirmation. Still hits here, though. The second hat is a natural three, but that's still a 27 touch. That's ridiculous. I don't even natural know. Natural 15 for a four 39 touch. Oh boy. So you will take, in this order, 17 points of fire damage, followed by 28 points of cold damage, followed by 25 points of acid damage, but it's actually 19 points of acid damage because of the invocation. Ouch. That's not great. Did the invocation go away when you went unconscious? Um, and a called invocation cannot be disrupted, but it ends immediately if the Omdura is killed, paralyzed, stunned, or knocked unconscious. Right. So actually, you do take the full acid damage. Nice. Sorry, Kira. Okay. All right. That brings us to Jessup. Jessup will five foot step and swift action or cane strike release a flurry of okay. three shots. Go for the damage. Uh, make sure I got everything here. A cane point blank fire in the melee. Shared Wrath is still on? Yes, should be, I think. Because it's a, it's a cast spell, so that should keep going. Yeah, yeah! All miss. Three 20 shots. 28 will miss. 20 will miss. Natural one will miss. Oh, that gosh, is, that um, was bad. That was a 10, a 7, and a 1. That'll bring us to Orin, though. Orin, you almost hit last round. <laughs> Wasn't that even tempting me? <laughs> you almost hit last round, Orin. You you want to give it another go? <laughs> I mean, you were real close to hitting last round. Like, you almost dealt damage. You're not wrong. Let's roll them dice. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens here. A 36 will hit, 25 will miss, and the natural one will miss. So roll me 1d100, and oh, unfortunately man. you will miss. <laughs> For you. With a 43. Sadly. <sighs> Once again, you were so close to hitting. Roll 20 is really, like, screwing us over with these natural ones. Yeah. That brings us to Kieran, though. Kieran dealt a lot of damage last round. We'll see what he can do this round. Okay. He's going to do the same thing again. Uh, First bite is a 35. Potential hit. Okay. So my 2d20, or d20. No, please no. 2d100. (laughs) Oh, that's one. But that's a miss. So... One 19. Miss, those two both miss. missed that both time. Both of those will miss. Okay. Second bite, natural one. This is beautiful. Miss. Okay. First claw, 40. 40, 40 might hit. Uh, 56 will hit. So that damage, minimum 16. And then Jessup's two. Next claw attack is a 39. Potential hit. A 59 and a 90. So that hits for 20 damage with five from Jessup. Uh, wing attack one, 24, nice. wing attack two, <laughs> natural 19 for a 37, which is a tentative. Wait, no, uh, so that's not true. That's not a tentative critical threat. It shouldn't be. Okay. I think I put that in the there. Because the wings are using their higher base attack bonus or what? No, 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 no. It's, I rolled the right, the right attack, but I had a multiplier of 19 in there from one time when Gideon did something, I think, with... Well, it- Regardless, this creature is amorphous and immune to critical hits. Okay. So. Well, anyway, it should still hit with a 37, though, right? Potentially. Potentially hit. Okay, 2d100, 61, and a 4. It will hit. Minimum 16, and then all 4. Right. So still up. That's all I can do, and now I shall die. That brings us to Gideon. Uh, you are standing, and you have your uh, crappy... No, I, I realize I don't. I'm going to drop it. <laughs> Grab, okay. grab the Enduring Bloom because it's a two-handed okay. weapon. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we'll f- five by step, and we'll take uh, one attack, but not first without healing up a little bit. Okay, and one attack, natural one. A natural one will miss. Brings us to the top of the next round. It is the creature's turn. Yeah, the creature is gonna make its ray attacks against Kieran, and we'll see see what happens there. So. Uh, that is a natural 20 <laughs> to confirm. Oh, boy. Uh, it was not a natural one to confirm, so that's a third D3 to confirm against touch. Yep. So you take... you telling me that Naga didn't know that this thing was right down the hall? Yeah, right? That's what you're telling me. They're in cahoots. That's what you're telling me right now? They hadn't been down here in years, they said. 
They haven't walked 50 feet down the hall in years. <laughs> Can we just no, like summon them over here to help, please? All right. <laughs> so you take 37 points of damage as that's a bad roll too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's a really bad roll. Yeah. Uh, you take 37 points of the first one. What did I say the first one was fire damage? Yeah, first one's fire damage. All right. Are you still alive? Yep. Okay. It'll take its second attack against you. Not a crit, but it'll definitely hit you. You take 27 points of acid damage. No, cold damage. Sorry, cold damage. I fall unconscious and I presumably fall out of dragon form. Uh, Why? I don't know what happens with that, but I'm down. It's as per the spell, probably. So he probably persists. Okay. Uh, Okay, so you're down. So it's going to swap over to 66. Uh, I guess I was just assuming it was going to hit Gideon, but I'll roll for it. Yeah, it hits Gideon. So you take 32 points of acid damage. So 22. Yes. All right. That brings us to Jessup. Jessup, you see these uh, rays flying out, and uh, Kieran, who had been flying as a dragon, falls to the ground and collapses. You don't know if he's dead or dying or I mean, clearly unconscious in some form. All but right. You don't know oh, else. help out. We can here. Cure serious wounds. Hold the charge. Maintain performance. Runs over. Okay. Touch, touch Bubladon. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the images would get in the way, or no? <gasps> Probably. Because they, they, they don't go away when I fall unconscious because they persist, right? Yeah, they shouldn't. So I believe you would have to roll a d6 to see if you successfully touch. Oh, crap baskets. Well, sorry, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> And if you would know that I have images, so if you don't want to do that, that's acceptable as well. Because, like, he does this every time. You would know that there's images. You would know it would be hard to touch him. So if you don't want to risk losing the spell, like, that's, that's totally Well, you different. wouldn't lose the spell. Oh, you just right. hold the charge? Just, okay. Well, that's up to you, you still, you, though. Yeah. Like, if, if you would still try that. In theory, I would shoot at it, and I would tell Orin to try to channel, because that would hit Kieran. Oh. You would lose the spell if you did that. If, oh, I, well, I'm just saying retroactively go back oh, to okay. casting the spell, but that's up to you. He's saying he wouldn't I'm cast, you'd just shoot at it. Just hope for the best. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So, yeah, Jess will see down five foot step and on. Kira needs help. He's hard to touch. I remember. Oh, the same JS Fire Courage, Arcane Strike, Point Rank Shot, Wrath. All right. Let's see what we can do. 34, 19, 20, so maybe one. 34 might hit, and the 19 and 20 will both miss. So, D100. 82. 82 will hit, dealing 17 points of damage, plus 5, so... Why 17? Because it rolls the damage with the attack. Yeah, you already did the damage. You did 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I roll it again? I was confused. I Never mind. 22. The creature with 7 hit points goes down. Nice. Nice. However, we will remain in initiative order because that will matter. So, Jessup, that is your turn. Technically, the first attack. Did you 5 foot step? I did. Okay, so yeah. The first attack put it down, so you'd have a move equivalent action. But Well, I've already five foot steps, so it didn't matter. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anything else you could do with a move action. but Nope, just kind of insist to Orin to try some channeling and excluding out the, the brain. Okay, that'll bring us to Orin then. Coup de gras! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know how you guys feel about me. 19. Okay, everybody heals up 19. Kieran does not move. Kieran does not move. <gasps> <gasps> Oh, why didn't I do that? Because of the m- images. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because that's the problem. Is even if you tried Breath of Life, you'd have to target Kieran. I could dispel him. Yeah, but I, you have to do your Breath of Life within the round after they had fallen. I think you, you have a little bit larger of a window, I think. I mean, I have raised dead, but yeah. It would have only been a... Basically, it would have been a one, one in six chance that you uh, succeeded. But... You channel, and you don't see any movement. Um, and with that, we will drop out of initiative order. Can I heal check? You can really heal check. To see if there's if Kieran's still alive? Wow. Uh, with a 10, you're not sure. The images are getting in the way, and you can't accurately assess. <laughs> just, I'm pushing him just aside. Pretending. He's being dramatic <laughs> again. Just pretending. Yeah, I feel like Jessup tries to run up and help pick up or, or grab and embrace Kieran's he's still a dragon. dragon body. <laughs> I know. Well, he's trying yeah. to like grab, but he keeps missing. Because every time he tries to go and grab at him, 
Yeah, we're out of initiative order because that one round has passed. You should just try to hit him, and then you'll dispel the images. I, well, yeah, so <laughs> after, after the initiative ends, you would be able to go up, and you could pretty easily dispel all the images methodically to the point where there are no more images. But yeah, with the second channel, everybody gains another 22 hit points, but again, uh, Kieran does not move. Oh my goodness. <sighs> so is Kieran dead? It would appear to be the fact that Kieran does appear to be dead. Sarah whispered to me after the fact, she said that the critical hit was really bad damage and brought her exactly to zero. Yeah. Oh, this is the so worst. Was and then the, the hit after that brought her to negative... 20 something yeah yep. so that was gonna do it for sure okay well and the other bad part is that as a dragon my con goes up so effectively if i were to lose the dragon form i could have potentially also died because i would lose like the con all of a sudden it's kind of like bear's endurance right but I'm, i mean once the dragon form wears off i'll go down more con but or more HP, but I'm already dead, so it doesn't really matter. It just sucks because it's a pretty big resource tax, but that's okay. Yeah, Orn, is there uh, anything you can do? I have, I have a scroll already. Oh well, I would, I would hold the, the scroll. Oh yeah, if you have a diamond, I would. Yeah, I, I do. So I would just use the diamond, not the scroll, because you can use the scroll. Yes. At any time, so it just um, seems like a better idea, it. if needed. Yes. No yeah, fun. exactly. Yes, that's, that's kind of my thinking. All right, well, we'll bring him back. Don't sound right. so defeated about <laughs> it or anything. Raised it! I guess we'll bring him back <laughs> if we have We don't no. have an alternative. <laughs> I mean, let's discuss this. Do, is, there, is there an option other than bringing him back? <laughs> he is kind of a pain. Jeff is going to be like, I don't want to hear anything about how many cloaks I give away. <laughs> it just costs us a 5,000 gold piece diamond. I mean... I understand, Gideon, that you were upset that uh, he attacked the Trox and the snake, but I, I don't no, think no, that, that should no. be any problem. Uh, I'm, we should. Uh, that wasn't what my tone meant to convey. I'm just... Uh, I let him down. I should have been his shield, and I don't think that he should have fallen. That was my burden I take as well. Trust me, you're night shining armor and all, and take some good uh, bludgeoning hits there, but uh, how, do, how do you tackle laser beams? I don't know. But I'll get stronger and I'll find a way. <laughs> Shonen montage. <laughs> Training arc. As you spend the next couple minutes getting rid of all the images or waiting for them to disappear, and then you cast a, you spend one minute casting Ray's Dead, you see the diamond in your hand evaporate as it is consumed and obliterated by the spell, and you restore life to the deceased Kirin. Uh, Kieran, you are raised back to life. Your soul returns to your body if, as long as you are willing. If he wants to, he can say no. Or, you know, you can say no. Oh, he's he's willing. He is <laughs> okay. very willing to come back. So <laughs> I would yes. be like, come on, really? So this Wait. could get complicated. Just reading right. raised dead. So I I have two permanent negative levels. Yeah, I have yes. twelve hit points. And okay. technically, by the rules, I have to roll 50% chance for all of my unused spell slots to make sure I don't lose them. Okay. Just how many spell slots do you have? I have six level ones, five level twos, five level threes, five level fours, three level fives. So just roll a bunch of D100s and just go down the line. So my level one's 60 hundred. So, so I lose four. That's right. Four. Level twos, I roll five d hundred. I lose two. Uh, level threes, I have five, so five be hundred. I lose three. Three. You are not doing that well. Yep. And no, then some of them. fours, I lose one, three. two, three, well, four. Because 50 is on the yep. one to 50. And then level fives, I lose, well, three be hundred. I lose two. Two. Oh, oh wow. That was brutal. Wow, did we just have a brutal fight or what? Because I am tapped out. Can you imagine having <laughs> cast 13 spells in one combat like that? Wow. Uh, Kieran had a lot of quicken spells. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think when he comes back, he looks kind of green. Like, very green. He doesn't feel well. He just lays there for a while, and I think he's he's sweating profusely. Kieran, first your pants and now your life. I'm so sorry. You're not having a good day. <laughs> Where's your pants about your life? Yeah, that's the way. 
I still have my pants, right? Oh, it looks like I, it at least. Yeah. That's all that matters. Did the image go away when you died? No, it's my clothes. It's on. It's on my clothes. It's it's permanent as long as I wear these sleeves. Did you do it? I'm assuming you beat it. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, we did. Yeah. I think Orin's actually standing on its lifeless gelatin body. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Glad. Glad to hear it. It went down as soon as you did. We were just kind of a few seconds too late. Uh, uh, that does raise a question. Uh, while we while we're on the subject, um, Karen, you you did die uh, again. Yep, I believe you this time. I feel like I died. Yeah. So, um, does anyone never want to come back? We should probably establish that now. Like, if one of you dies, is there anyone here who doesn't want to be brought? back to life that's a very interesting question i would say for me i would prefer it unless you don't want to use the resources in which case fair enough then i will just die well i think we only have use for one more resurrection don't we uh, for now yes i mean i'm sure once we reach Kragadon, we should be able to acquire another diamond but yeah for now we only have one more <laughs> there's no diamonds in Kragadon. Kragadon is known for having no gems, no gems. whatsoever. <laughs> right, right. right. Dwarf have no gems. Okay. no gems. Citadel has no gems. No gems. No gems whatsoever. Jason's going to make us roll for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, here, if you want to go to the mines, you can dig one up yourself, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Are there any down here while we're going through these tunnels? Can we like, right. chip away a $5,000 or gold diamond down here? No. <laughs> Five thousand dollar gold diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. You guys are here in this chamber, having gone through a pretty brutal fight. Probably the most, on paper, the most difficult creature you've fought so far. So I basically was a beholder. You were saying it's the Pathfinder version of the beholder. It's called a Cartagine. I've never seen one of them before. It's it's basically a beholder. And it's a super cool creature. Awesome. Creature. A cartagene. Um, <laughs> a cartogenes. <laughs> That's where his pants went. That's, so if there's a cartogenes. I can just grab a pair and put them on. But uh, you guys are in this chamber. And again, looking around, you can see strewn across the ground and on the walls are the body parts of a chitinous insectile creature. Uh, actually multiple looking around you think there's probably maybe three or four bodies worth of body parts here that you can identify as most likely the troxes uh it would appear that they met a gruesome fate against this creature raised dead we've got one more raised dead <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> i guess it didn't make a difference or burned the papers no offense and looking forward i mean you don't even need dark vision to see this distance you see the glowing red of lava in the next chamber over and you uh good to move or do you need a few more moments uh i feel terrible but if we need to go i'll i can do it well we can if you need to sit here for a moment we can kind of just take a peek and come back well i don't think a moment's gonna do any good but if you want to look ahead feel free well, i'm sure between uh Oren and i we could help take care of some of your physical ailments I have restoration and lesser restoration as scrolls, but I don't know what you have. Yeah, lesser won't do anything. Restoration will get rid of one of the negative levels. Can't you roll per day to get one of those gone? Or no, it's... No. Never mind, that's, that's the ability damage. These are permanent negative levels. But I will get my spells back tomorrow once I rest. It's just I'm stuck with one negative level for at least a week. For the next week, yes. And I can prepare restoration for tomorrow. Right? No, nope, it's a time limit thing. Restoration can only like you can a creature can only be healed one negative level per week with restoration, I believe. Unless you have greater restoration, right? Is it per seven days or is it calendar? Like can you can you do it on a Saturday and then Sunday starts the new week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also that requires diamond dust worth five thousand gold pieces for restoration greater. Yeah. yeah, greater restorations. Oof. Yeah, no, restoration Oof. is a thousand, but you can only heal one negative level, yeah. which I have. Negative level possessed by a target in a one week period. Yeah. But the scroll already includes the material cost, so you don't have to worry yep. about the material cost if you use the I scroll. do. I have it here. So that would be a three round. Yeah, I was going to say, do we want to do that? I'm assuming, yes. 
I don't want to act for the yeah. group. Okay. And that's uh, within the level that Gideon can just do it. I believe Restoration is a fourth level yep. spell. And you can cast fourth yep. level spells. So yeah, you're yeah. good. It just happens. And one of the negative levels is gone. And there it goes. 1700 again. Oops. To be fair, without uh, Kieran, we would not have defeated that no. creature. Yeah, I think I Kieran think. did no, not at, all. at least yeah, half. Did tons yeah. of damage. Well, and it's only because of blind fight. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, the card to Gene. So normally it has 29 hit, uh, AC, but there is uh, one of the one of the gems it gets gives it a pretty beefy insight bonus to AC. I could have technically boosted it even more because it has combat expertise, but I didn't want to waste doing melee attacks in order to do combat expertise. So I never bothered with it, but it could get it as high as like, what, 37, 38, something like that. Quite the push. But yeah, it can get up to four of those ray attacks if it chooses all four of the gems to be ray attacks. And it has ray mastery. So it can make as many ranged attacks in a round as it has manifested gems that provide ray ray attacks, maximum four. Ray attacks uh, do not provoke attacks of opportunity. It can't make a ray attack in the same round it does melee attacks. So I never did melee attacks. No, those ray attacks are brutal. And the thing that you guys, yeah, the thing that you guys were having issues with, it has dark vision adaptation, which I'd never heard of before. But a creature using dark vision has a fifty percent miss chance of when targeting a card to Gene. So because all of you guys have been using dark vision, you had the fifty percent miss chance. Ooh. But if you were using like regular sight wouldn't have happened i've never heard of that before so if i would have cast dancing lights yep then we could have just hit it normally yep if you had dancing lights no no concealment this was a classic case though of we didn't know anything about the creature yeah i mean it's a cr14 so the dc to notice anything was pretty high sure but let's say we get a successful piece of knowledge information and you tell us about just dark vision he casts dancing lights, and there goes his fifty percent mischance. Yeah. You know that's a big, that's sure. huge. Playing the bard, I hear no, what no, you're no, doing. No, 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 it was just the classic. That's that's cool. I like how that happens to work out in Pathfinder, where knowledge plays a huge role. Yeah, so it's it's gem. It had the in, the insight bonus to AC gem, and it also had a gem that gives it fast healing five. But it it swapped that out once it got really low because you guys were actually doing some pretty big damage, and it wanted to put you down. Well, with those heals that Oren gave me, Kieran feels much better. Still a little less than Shaky. 100% and down the majority of his spells, but we can press on. Oh, great. Look, it's lava ahead. How fun. This just gets better and better. Yeah, don't don't swim. Yeah, right. Did, did we check? Does this thing have anything? Can we take its little floaty gems? Yeah, the iron stones. So no, the gems the gems are not iron stones. They're literally just like a part of its Ugh. body. Ew. Like they are not magical items. Can, Rats. can I harvest them like iron stones? I mean, if you want <laughs> Gideon, pieces of its flesh. Gideon yes, tries to make them float not. around his head, and they just fall to the ground. And he keeps picking it up and trying to make it float. Yeah. If you look around the chamber, or like I, like, I assume casting detect magic and, and all that stuff, uh, you do detect magic in the chamber, but it's not on the creature. There's one of the bits of Trox corpse has a magical has two magical auras uh, coming out of it and if you guys go over there I'll just with your current level of spellcraft checks you'll be able to identify these pretty easily as there is a plus one adamantine construct bane battle axe that's really specific that's really specific <laughs> <laughs> and there is a golem bane scarab oh okay Okay, I'm smelling a metagame. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can smell whatever you want to smell. I wonder what golems they were planning on fighting. or. What's the golem bane scarab for? That means it's that you can... Gold. Yeah, you can identify a golem if it's like just a statue. Like, you can look and be like, oh, that's a golem. And also, it's interesting because the golem bane scarab allows you to ignore their DR, right? Yeah, but most of the time their DR is adamantine, which your weapon would do so it's kind of overkill but yep so i mean if you're looking at the battle axe it looks like it's of dwarven make and uh Oren, you can tell it is not dwarven but of duragar make uh, ah. and you probably recall that rivalda mentioned that when they had escaped they had made off with some things oh 
So this is probably just belongings of that caravan. So Jason, I don't know, maybe this is too metagaming, but was there any chance that we would find them alive? No, not these ones. Okay. No. I didn't know if there was like a timer thing where if we had done something different, like we could have found them alive. They died pretty much as soon as they got here. In fact, the Nagas technically saved Karazar from dying in a way. Wow. That's true. So did the paper serve any purpose? Yeah. So the book says, if the PCs present Karazar with her ownership papers taken from Rivalda's treasure... The Trox coos in joy and offers to accompany the PCs until they reach their destination as a sign of thanks. Oh. Karazar accompanies the PCs and protects them to the best of her ability. If the PCs show her exceptional kindness, she may even elect to stay as a cohort, but that was never going to happen. <laughs> but then watch her have died in this fight and then we would have felt bad, so it's probably better off this way. No. <laughs> but in a way, yeah. If she had died, that would have been worse. So yeah, as Kieran pointed out, you see down the tunnel it appears to be some lava. Yeah, well, we press on eventually once everyone's feeling okay. You continue forward and you enter into a massive chamber. You see a breach of glassy stone edges a vast lake of lava that stretches out for a hundred feet. No, sorry, several hundred feet. An ancient lava tube exits to the west while the north, you see an ascending path of rocks curve up the side of the immense chamber. A stone structure floats gently atop the bubbling pool of lava some 20 feet from the shore. The ceiling is shrouded in darkness here, rising several hundred feet well beyond your dark vision and well beyond the glow of the lava. But you do see a few clusters of metal pipe and ceramic tubes descend from above. And with that, as you're taking in the scenery of this massive lake, you are obviously assaulted by immense, extreme heat. But we will deal with that next week. 